Hello, good evening and welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. It's the second session of the day and we're about half an hour from getting Group B underway here. If you weren't with us earlier, well, you missed some small cocks, but some really big results, didn't they, Henry? Absolutely, and it was a session where 4 3 was just the order of the day, wasn't it? I think we said at the start of the day when we had our little preview on stage before the beginning of Group C, we thought that these, these six were going to be very hard to prize apart, and it most certainly showed, and it's going to be some gripping conclusion tomorrow. Absolutely, and I think you could say, Glenn, finishing or miss darts at double really was the order of the day, especially at the start of the morning session. Uh, if you scrutinised it, the scoring was absolutely fine today, but it's okay sometimes when the finishing is really bad in one or two games, but it was the majority of the matches. You know, near the end, each game sort of just went into one uh, you know, one big game there. Fascinating, very, very interesting to watch. Uh, set it up nicely for tomorrow. And even though Alex Small is currently bottom of the table, he is someone whose throw has certainly impressed you. And I had a chat with him, and I think hopefully he appreciates that. Uh, just maybe some, I feel like I'm like the, the father to a lot of these people now, but, you know, these words of wisdom in the middle of what I'm trying to say to people, but I do like that boy, yeah. Absolutely. And Jamie Kellen is currently top of the table. We've been talking about poor finishing, but that's been a strength of his throughout the course of the week. Maybe not at spells today, but he's picked up in other areas of his game. I think the one thing we thought going into today was as good as Jamie's finishing was, it was a scoring game that needed to improve. He did exactly that today. And I think we were, with Jamie, we know the talent he's got. I think we're expecting him to kind of kick on and, and take that next level. And I feel like as the week's going on, maybe we're getting just that. I think he could be a real danger this week. I agree. And I think that game against Darren Monk was absolutely superb, wasn't it? Two friends battling it out on the hockey and Jamie getting the win. I think that was my favourite game of the day. And uh, he's come across really well. And again, when you get a chance to speak to them, it's what you see is what you get. And uh, he's a guy who said if it's Saturday night, he's in it. He's got a lot of people coming to watch. So... Uh, yeah, it probably gets my attention, and uh, he impressed me. I guess it's the first time, whereas, you know, a lot of the team have seen him play before. For me, to see him up close and personal, but I was, uh, yeah, very impressed. So that's how Group C is looking going into tomorrow morning session. That will recommence at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow. But now our attention turns to Group B. I've actually spoken to Scott Williams since being here today and, and spoken about, you know, he mentioned Nathan Gervin, who he's up against first this evening and just saying you know he's someone who has certainly got the ability to just forget yesterday happened and put it on again today Scott did say you know he wants to be the person that stops him from doing so but Nathan has got that ability would you agree no Stephanie I think one of Nathan's best components is his temperament and that's going to be tested to the fore because of the circumstances of yesterday but obviously we've seen him coming to the venue tonight and for some players, you can kind of see that loom over their mind. It didn't for Nathan. It was just another day on the hockey. So I think he'll be okay. But my word, that's a tough opener against Scott Williams. I think they're two players which, well, Scott should be on the Pro Tour next year. And you wouldn't be surprised if Nathan follows in his footsteps. Most definitely. And we couldn't end this without talking about Matty Dennant, someone who you know quite well. He could have stopped you from winning the Premier League. Yeah, I mean, he was a name that stood out. I, you know, I was hoping sort of Colin Osborne was going to be on here tonight. So to get Matty and Colin, it's, uh, it's quite incredible. It, for me, it feels like, you know, this morning was the hors d'oeuvre and now it's the uh, main courses to come and uh, it's five fantastic players and some sensational viewing that I'm, that I'm a sure with of. I'm going to ask you both now. So whoever wants to go first, I'm going to start with you, Henry. Who do you see coming through Group B? So I've just done a little bit with Sports Stuff TV back in the studio and I've gone for Nathan Gervin at 9-2 to two to win this group. He was the fourth favourite out of five, which absolutely staggered me, but also shows the talent that's on show in this group. So I think he's got a really good chance. If he can block out yesterday, and I think actually playing Scott will help because it's a really tough game to start. If he can block that out tonight, then yeah, I think he's a really good bet to go through. Who do you think he'll go through with? Oh, a really mm -hmm. tough question. I'm going to say Scott Williams and... I'm going to say Matt Dent. Wow, wow. And um, who are your three to progress from Group B? It, it, it genuinely is a difficult question um, because it wouldn't surprise me if any of the five going through. But as a fellow TTT sider, Colin Osborne's right up there. I think Scott Williams, this is maybe a too bold of a statement, is one of the best players in the world. He's, he yeah. really is yeah. that good. He's got all the attributes and that brashness, that cockiness, that self-confidence to, to really go all the way. 
Um, I don't know an awful lot about Sebastian, apart from the fact that he's a, he's a wonderful player. Um, Matty Dennant, obviously, is uh, I've got that sort of attachment to him there. Um, but I've got to go for Nathan as well. I'm a huge fan of his, so quite similar. So maybe Colin Osborne instead of Matty Dennant. Excellent. Well, we've got 10 games coming up for you this evening. It all gets underway from 10 p.m. on Sporty Stuff TV. Come and join us then. You'd be mad not to.
Hello, good evening and welcome back to the Moda Super Series. It's the second session of the day and that means the start of Group B. But before we tuck into tonight's action, and it is going to be a belting night of action, I've got Glenn Durrant alongside me to discuss what we've seen so far this week, Glenn, because we do already have one player through two finals nights in Danny Lauby. So we're going to give you a little bit of a reminder of what happened in Group A because it was all to play for, wasn't it, going into the penultimate game of the evening, of course. Danny Lauby had the opportunity to seal his place. Didn't quite do that, though, did he? It was an exciting group throughout and uh, a wonderful finale for Danny. I'm over the moon for him. These guys were coming across and, you know, coming all the way from uh, America like he's done and grabbing these opportunities. It, it was great to see. But I think the story was more about Nathan as well. Uh, so I think both deserve a positive message. Most definitely. And then Nathan Given in that final match of Group A on that Wednesday afternoon. Of course, we're going to see, sorry, first we're going to see Danny Lauby's 1-2-1 one -one attempt in this match. And this was the real turning point. Uh, and this first start is just sums up many, you know, when I watched this, Stefan, today, uh, you know, it was a, a, big fat, a big fat five there, as you do, but so many uh, dark players do love the 25. And then it was sort of advantage back to Nathan Gervin again in the group because, uh, you know, that really set up uh, Nathan going to the last game to win it. And we mentioned it yesterday at times. There we can see Nathan Gervin. He lost out to Biowetsky, who, of course, he will be in action against later on this evening. But it almost feels like, given the way that final match went, it would have been better for Nathan had Lauby wrapped that up himself so it wasn't on Nathan to lose that match. He's so mature for a young lad. I mean, he's got a wonderful background with Alan Souter, who is a real giant of the game. I have so much respect. And I can also see the Chris Mason influence in Nathan. Uh, and I've come in tonight, and it's just another day now. He's, he's got a wonderful future. Uh, you know, he's got, he's got wonderful attributes, but also his, his values are good. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he'll have a, a fruitful career, I'm certain. And really interestingly, speaking to Williams today before tonight's action, of course, they're up first in our first match of the evening. But he was saying, you know, Nathan Gervin strikes him as someone who can just reset after a bad day. And that's so crucial in this. But it's also how it builds a player, you know, at just 19 years of age. That mental resilience is something that you need if you are going to then progress to the PDC. You just put that in the memory bank. You, you learn from your losses more than you do some of your wins. But it's fantastic to hear Scott talking about someone like that because Scott's very much about being brash, being cocky, this guy. I mean, he, he's one of the few guys who's walked into a pro to and, you know, he wasn't fazed by anyone. But I've seen a different side of him tonight. He speaks really well and to hear him speaking of Nathan like that and, you know, what a fantastic opening game that's going to be. Absolutely. So that was Group A. That's how that ended. It was Danny Lauby, as you can see, confirmation there. He's already booked his spot in finals night. A reminder that you could be here too if you go to dartshop.tv. You can get your free tickets there. And why wouldn't you want to be here on Saturday night? We can now have a look at Group C because that's what we focused on this morning into this afternoon. Remarkable amount of games. Go into a last leg decider. It's really, really finely poised, isn't it? I mean, it was my first time as a commentator and wow was I put through the ringer a little bit there there was just so many four threes I mean the table could have been the total opposite there and such an exciting table uh, for tomorrow you know anything can happen and each win now is going to be absolutely massive and a word on Jamie Kellen, we can see there, he's top in the group at the moment. Really, really impressive, especially we focus so much on his finishing at the start of the week, but his scoring's really, really improved as well, hasn't it? Yeah, we, uh, we did build up his finishing, and, and he was the best finisher today, which is, I know it's a, a stupid statement to me, but finishing was incredibly inconsistent with all the players today. That was the thing. All of them scored well. Stefan Belmont scored superbly well and is sitting in sort of fifth place there. But um, yeah, he was the best finisher and that's why he finished top of the group. Absolutely. And that group concludes tomorrow. We can see how things are poised going into that. Aaron Monk, of course, someone we've talked about a lot as well. Alex Mall is in sixth place on two points, but he's someone you've had a little catch up with because you do really like his action, don't you? I like him. I, I like him. He's a young talent. You don't win the champion of champions uh, without being a super player. And there's just something about him that I really like. And like I said to him, you don't lose, you learn. Uh, he's young enough to sort of 
And, and that's what this is about, this super series. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity for people and uh, you can't buy this experience. And uh, yeah, he'll be buzzing with that. Yeah, absolutely. So we move on to tonight's action then. Of course, we do have players involved who drop down from Group A. Nathan Gervin, one of them. Sebastian Biawetsky, the other one of those. I know you said you've not seen a great deal of him, but this was a 1-5-2 checkout from him. Finishing was actually a real, real weakness for him in the opening three days, but that finish superb and we've seen what he can do on big stages especially in the UK Open exactly the quarter final and if I remember rightly he got a nine out of the you know the year before that as well so all five players it, like I said earlier it, it feels like we've had the order this is now the main course uh, all five players can win this group and I'm super excited most definitely and we have to mention Dennant because he is somebody who could have prevented you from getting through Q school and going on to win the Premier League it's, uh, I was looking for Colin Osborne's name, obviously being a fellow Teesider, and when I saw that Matty Dennett was here, I knew that there's probably going to be the headlines when someone chatted with me. But we're having a laugh downstairs about it. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of, it, it goes back to he missed three darts, the missed double 16 for me to get me to a card. And, you know, would I ever been Premier League champion? No. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I owe an awful lot to uh, Matty for that miss. It's almost like we planned it. We, we really, really didn't. We're not that organised here to plan something like that. But of course, Nathan Gervin is first in action tonight. It's going to be really, really interesting, isn't it, to see how he responds to the, the disappointments of yesterday. I'll use the word very mature. Uh, he's, he's great to talk to. And if you look at the body language downstairs, he doesn't look like a person. That's took a beating yesterday. He's, uh, he'll take some beating tonight. I know he's the fancy for Henry too. So, um, yeah, he's a great young man, great young player. And, of course, he takes on someone in Scott Williams when I had a catch-up with him prior to tonight's action. One of the questions I asked him was, what's your biggest achievement in darts? And he had to pause because he's achieved so much just in the past 12 months. Of course, winning Players' Championship 17, something you know is incredibly difficult to do. And, of course, a record-breaking four Challenge Tour titles. He is, he is the real deal. He's a super, but he's got everything there. And, uh, he, you know, he's very self-confident. He's self-aware. Uh, he understands where he wants to go and anyone who'll wear yellow trousers, the root with the bear stuff and all that, you know, you must be good to do that. I'm really excited to see how he performs tonight, um, to see him so close and personal, uh, which you get a chance to do in the commentator box there. It's, uh, it's going to be a great night. Yeah, it really is a mouth-watering clash to get us going this evening. This man is going to sprint down to the commentary box to join Henry Deacon. Good evening, Abby. Good evening, everyone. Seconds out, round two on Thursday here at the Moda Super Series. And we see Nathan Gervin, the man who was so close to qualifying through Group A before being pipped at the post by Danny Lalby, take on Scott Williams. He's been the man of the moment in 2022. Top of the Challenge Tour, Alder Mayor, a four-time winner in 2022 and a victory in Leicester only this weekend. A Pro Tour winner this year, winning Players' Championship 17 in Niedhausen. And he's not a man short of confidence either, even giving us a wave to the camera en route to the hockey early on this evening. This should be an enthralling tungsten tussle to open up our evening's action. And what a Group B we have in store here as well at the Motors Super Series. So if I can guarantee you one thing you should do this evening, it is sit back, relax, and enjoy all the darting drama unfold. Because for certain, there is going to yeah, be a like fair bit Scott of that. Because first. the way Group B works, Game five on. players, three go through. The first night sets it up nicely for Friday evening's action. And alongside me in the commentary box to... Describe all the action is the three-time Lakeside Ooh, champion, great. former Premier League champ, Glenn Darwin. Glenn, a very good evening to you. Yeah, it's been a long day already, but uh, this game sort of whetted the appetite the moment I saw it. And uh, I do feel like, um, you know, this afternoon was the starter, but there's five unbelievable players tonight, and uh, we both picked this as possibly the game of the night. 100. And you feel like when you watch groups here at the Super Series, you can kind of feed off the first couple of games. If these two get up to a good start, which Gervin, in fairness, 60. is doing here, then that can really set what the, the tone for what we're going to see after. An opening win is huge. When, when three go through from a, a five-man group, you know, if you can get off with a, a big win first, first game. But I think they've both been very, very respectful of each other. I was surprised to hear... Uh, Scott wax lyrical about Nathan because I just assume that Scott is this brash, cocky person who can beat anybody. And uh, it, it's been nice to see the softer side of Scott backstage. And uh, I mean, what I mean, what a talent! You know, I'm obsessed with throws. There's not an awful lot wrong can go, you know, with that there. And also, he's using the dilly flags there. Uh, so uh, that, that's interesting. But he does like his yellow, I guess. 
new stable mates of Dimitri's. Now he's joined Target. Oh, and one thing I've also seen with Scott Williams is he does like to help the younger players forward. I remember being in the Isle of Man only one this year and he was helping out Leighton Bennett with his game. I think they're both from Lincolnshire. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. So require that didn't surprise me, but Nathan here for 81. This would be a real settler. Game and a double, double leg. to start the night. What Nathan a fantastic Gerber. start there from young, young Nathan. Who had a, an absolute nightmare uh, finish to yesterday. But that just shows you the calibre, uh, the so composure of this young to throw man. That's a fantastic Game start. On. Well, we're always going to ask the question of how he can get himself back up for tonight following the disappointment of yesterday. And that is your emphatic answer. Hey, it's you won. And it was a break of throw as well, more importantly. And these best of sevens, you know, they, they're like gold dust, especially with the, you know, the calibre of the players that are here tonight. Break of throws in no, the best I of sevens. Do one. But I think Scott's just warming up to the task as well. Um, and I'm loving the yellow up there. It's like a Coldplay track, no, isn't it? No, too. I'm not going to start singing. That was there uh, this afternoon. That was enough of that. Well, we have got a few stars and they're going to shine for you in everything Nine, that they all six. do over the next 10 Nathan's games or so here 92. at the Super Series. I suppose to Scott as well, it shows how good this format is because is this his second chance in this competition? A player who's won all that he's won this year on the Pro Tour circuit as well. He's had to come back for Group B just to try and qualify his way I thought into this event. There was a fantastic read about Robert Owen this week. Uh, and it was, it was a fascinating read. And he said, you know, he's played Pro Tours, Challenge Tours. He's played WDF. Uh, but he said the toughest one of all has been the Super Series because it's so cutthroat. You win a game, you go backstage with your head in your hands, B and then you're back on in half an hour's time. How do you pick yourself up? So you really find out an awful lot about yourself. But Scott's played uh, you know, something similar for England when you're, this, you know, you're on, you're off. Uh, hey, it, can be a real, you know, it can be a real help for you to have that sort of uh, history as well. Oh, I never had a 170 day. I was begging for one. Hey, T1. Talk myself out that again, didn't I? The curse of Daz of a turn to the evening session. I had a better ending than I did beginning this afternoon. Scott uses no, that 19 an awful six. lot there. Uh, you know, one thing about being a commentator, you really get up close and personal and see people playing, and uh, it's been really interesting to see some of them. We talked an awful lot today about people not using the 19s enough, whereas S Scott's starting down there an awful lot. 133 for Williams with Gervin back on 130 to consolidate no, the breakthrough accrued in the first leg of a hold yeah, in the second. A fantastic last start. A 130 finish here for Nathan is a, is a finish we all like. That leaves double five to go 2-0 up. Game what shown a the finish second that is. Leg. And what's Nathan even better about Gerber. that, Henry, is the fact that uh, Scott was sat on 36 there. He'll be feeling pretty good about himself. And uh, it was a holder throw. Well, He's throw averaging first. over 90, so it's job on. done so far. It's a great start for Nathan. And I think you fancied him to win the group. Yeah, so I was on Sporty Stuff TV early on this evening at about 8.25, 8.30. And... At nine to two to win the group, I thought they're huge odds for a player and Nathan's cap capabilities and calibre. I'm sure what no, was taken into consideration too. the sort of finish he had yesterday. You know, you think of how his morale's going to be, um, but like you said, he's mature beyond his years there, and you can just see that the Alan Suter and the Chris Mason influencing you him, and uh, you know, them two people will be huge for him going forward. Because it is so easy as a consequence oh, of yesterday three. just to fold in your whole week peter out as a as a result of it i never thought that would happen I, obviously nathan i go back to playing scottish open pairs with him i, I, thought, I don't know how if he's 19 now he's probably only 14 or 15 that day and people tell me you know when when was the best you've ever played and uh that day of playing pairs with him no i don't think the final or the semi-final but uh we've sort of had a bond since then and i remember sponsoring him for the finders masters one yeah i think i paid for his flight and uh, one or two one things for him. So, you know, I do have this affiliation with Nathan. It's great to see him doing so well. Got to get that tournament back on the calendar. It was one of the best. You didn't do too one bad there either, did you? Oh. Anything, do, anything BDO 80. I didn't do too <laughs> bad. But uh, we've seen this finish. I think it was going for two tops there, do you think? 
Looked like it, but he's blocked the bait. He's had to move all the way across to the right. 60. Nathan and you could tell with the last dart. We talk about game changes a lot today. Look at this finish that he's on. I think we also had a couple of bounce out there, but it did look like that was in treble five there. 40. Scott, you're so you to win this campaign. You'll need this double ten to really settle Scott down now. Game shot the third leg. Couldn't get any further in Scott the middle Williams. there. So this has had the ingredients of being a great game, and both players are absolutely delivering here. Starting is we well, hope to go on. To throw first. Now, just a little bit Game of a on. chat about your time in the country box so far. Obviously, you've mentioned that you get to see darts from a different way. And I'm not trying to talk myself out of a job here by this next day, what I'm going to say. But do you think One more players should hundred. come into the country box, have a little look, have a little bit of a tester with maybe here or Euro Tours or, or elsewhere? It's not as easy as you think. Um, and obviously, 60. You know, you're just tr sometimes trying to find the right words, make sure you're not repeating yourself. So it's not a job because you're a good dart player, you'll be a good commentator. Uh, you know, and I think you guys are absolutely safe of what you're doing. Um, but it's but One it's a great experience. And, I, and I've talked a lot today that it's been a very unhappy time for me at darts. It's been difficult with this sort of the 12 to 18 months, and I've been happy today. And it's 96. sort of giving me that jump, like, like what the coaching's doing. And uh, it, it's great just to talk to people backstage about the pressure of uh, all that. But a uh, lot tougher than you think. Hey, so uh, next time, we'll make sure we book you in for proper commentator. <laughs> You've been great. You're my partner now. That's, what, that's, that's your new name for me. Uh, but the transition's diff totally different. It's, 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 it's difficult. And, like I said, because you're a great dart player, doesn't mean that you're going to be a great commentator. But... That's my plan. That's my intention. I'm, I'm loving it. And if there's any opportunities, I, you know, I'll grab them with both hands. Luckily, you're good at 56. both. 56. God bless. There's that five pound. <laughs> now, talking about good players, these are two of the very best. Scott Nine, Williams, top of the challenge five. tour, order of merit. Nathan Gervin, yeah, seven from the development tour, order of merit. Could get himself a tour card because of those exploits. But here he wants 160 for a free one lead. And so Williams is going to get the opportunity now on 110 to accrue that break back and to level us up at two apiece. But that was a superb 100 there by Nathan. He looks good, but make or break. Game changer moment. Game shot on the fourth. Game changer done. They're Scott the kind of Williams. finishers. Because Nathan would have checked out on 60. I'm super confident of that. And that's the confidence that this man has right now. He probably felt as he walked up there. Uh, we'll Legend chat how long Scott's his points were. 50 millimeter points. I mean, I think it's only just in pipes. I've seen points longer than that. Um, but it, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful feeling when you get on that hockey and uh, when you've got them 110 and you feel confident that you're going to get it. That's the type of person, and that's probably how he's playing right now, that when he stepped behind there, no matter what Nathan was on, he probably felt he was going to finish. Are there any major distinct differences between a, a longer and a shorter point, do you think? I always found that if you get it right, the sort of the dark comes back out. So the, I guess there's an element where you can be hitting more 180s. You can see more of the bed. Um, and when you're playing bad like I've B, been, you, know, you do try uh, various things. But it wasn't for me. But we've had a good chat about his dart and what he wants. He knew all about them and uh, how many millimetres and everything that he wants. So he, knows what, you know, he knows exactly what he's looking for and what suits him. Nathan Gervin's not actually playing with his own darts. It's a pair borrowed off of our mate Andy Jenkins. 177. There's the dulcet tones of Owen Binks with a big 177 there. And like I said, he's just warming into this game very, very nice. 103. Finish there is clearly giving him his mojo. And 179 now. He'll be looking for a couple of trebles once again. A 171 there with a left double four. I'm surprised he changed. And he likes that part of the board as well. But he will return for 46 to make it 3-2. He's wrestled the game right back in his favour after Nathan Gervin looked as if he was going to run away with it. But that 1-2-8 one, could be 46. crucial if Williams cannot convert this 46 for 3-2. Two. Two sixteens. Game shot will do it nicely for Scott, Scott Williams. Williams. And that's three from four on the outer ring. The doubling has actually been sublime. 75% Williams. Two from two for Gervin. And we've seen... Outshots of 110 and 130 in this best. match. The total opposite uh, to sort of this afternoon where the scoring was amazing, but they just couldn't hit a double between them. You know, we're seeing two top operators right now. One and, uh, hundred. Both have got a presence on the hockey there. A lot of respect. Um, but that's what I'm really enjoying. And that's just the way that darts sit in there. It's just begging for another treble. 140. 
and that at the average is like stepping up right 96 there now and Nathan's over the 90 mark this is uh, we did say that this potentially could be the game of the day and, and both guys are delivering right now and hopefully this is just starters for our group this evening 140 he has real poise he just he just knows he's in a good position right now but this this is a 19 year old lad with borrowed darts you tell me 140 I mean, that just shows you the kind of talent after you know, a difficult day yesterday. I don't think really this match deserves a loser. 140. There's now, can you require there's, 81? There's just no tactics. They're just, no, no one's slowing down. No one's speeding up. Could be bringing the bull's average double 13. 68. That's the difference. That one, Scotty two millimeter difference 81. there. And leaves a, exactly the same finish now for Scott. It would be dark Javu, and this is for the match, but Williams likes to. Go the 15 route, the bullseye 56. to win it. And so Gervin will return for 13, 13 to take us all the way. We've been here before, Glenn. Like I said, the first dart's tough as he'd be glad that's gone in now. Game shot the Incredible sixth Incredible start of the day. Nathan Gervin. If, if you weren't watching this afternoon, it was just 4-3 after 4-3 after 4-3. We certainly earned our money uh, this morning. Uh, and it's Seven exactly and started again here to throw with a 3-3 three, three start. Game on. Uh, but for me, this game deserves it. And uh, it's going to be really interesting this last leg decider now. And Williams has really upped the average. It's now 97.79. Well, that's come tumbling down as a result of that visit. It's about nerve now. Who holds the nerve? And uh, with Scott going first, One, just with a 57. That's all you want to hear. And then Nathan goes up and blitz that treble 20 there for a lovely maximum. His second of the match. And the timing is perfectionate. There were so many one three fours again this afternoon, and uh, that's been replicated already. But he needs a treble. 57. That might not be enough the way both, both lads are playing right now. Should have handed the initiative back to Williams here. He just G's himself up. 60. But all of a sudden, when it's a one leg decider there, you do tighten them. Doesn't matter how relaxed you are, all of a sudden you start to think. And he'd be delighted with that first start there. And a ton, you would feel, is not enough, he'll think. 100. He'll think with such a perfect first start, he'll probably walk back a touch disappointed, but he's on a finish. He's in control. 60. Nathan, you're a corner 100. So he's got six starts at 164. And probably didn't think it going against the darts at this opportunity. What do you do now? Is it treble 20 again? That is what you call. That is what you call maturity for a 19 year old lad. That's an absolutely superb setup. Needs him on double 16 after 12 to claim the first victory of 90. the evening in Making Group B. And following 32. the disappointment of yesterday where he missed out to Danny Lowby. Nathan Gervin misses three match darts, and Williams is back Scott, for a ton. Can't believe his look right now, Scott, as he stands behind him. He G's himself up. What do you do? Do you stay? Double 10 for the match. Game oh, what shot a finish. And the match. Na what Scott will Nathan Williams. be thinking right now? An absolutely unbelievable start of the games tonight. A 4-3 finish for Scott Williams. 95.34. Staggering 66% on the averages. 110 finish. 100 finish. A fantastic start to this evening's games.
Hello, good evening and welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we've just seen Scott Williams come through a last leg decider to get the better of Nathan Gervin. We thought it would be a high quality contest to start the evening, didn't we? And it most certainly was. It's clear to see why Scott Williams is favourite to come through that group. But even in defeat, Nathan Gervin really showing his grit and determination with the performance. A huge 130 checkout from him, but two ton plus outs from Scott Williams helped get him him over the line ending the match with a ton outshot next up we've got Colin Osborne up against Sebastian Biowetsky let's see how this one unfolds in the company of Henry and Glenn thank you very much Abby Colin Osborne against Sebastian Biowetsky is our second game of the evening session here at the Super Series we've seen Seb already this week he took part in Group A finished third Right, for Colin Osborne, he returns us here at the Super Series. Seven-time PDC event winner, as you can see on your screen now, is the 47-year-old from some place called Middlesbrough. I don't know whereabouts that is on the map. No, never heard of it. Uh, I think it's up s somewhere where they all leave Palmos or something. But, uh, yeah, I must admit, it was the first name I looked out for when I got the call to do the commentary, uh, looked at the groups. You know, I was looking to see his Colin there. So it, it's wonderful to comment it on an absolute gentleman. I say, good mate of yours, isn't it, from your neck of the woods? He was a guy, he very, very quickly, he was a guy who used to play first for his local team, would play snooker first and had a 100 break in him. He's one of them ones who was good at most sport, but he'd have three at the board and would win, you know, 50, 60% of his games. And then hey, he like went Colin to, to throw first. And uh, Game you know, on. had these messages that he's absolutely killing it down there. And I didn't believe it because no one could improve that quickly. And then I saw him at the UK Open around about 2008, something like that, and he was sensational. Maybe we'll get him and Mark five. Williams to do an Olympic Games of darts and snooker and combined scores wins. He takes some beating in. If the decide is the yo-yo, we're laughing. Mark Williams Six. can play as well, actually. I, yeah, he can. And he can play golf, to, much to my... Uh, yeah, he, he came up to red card to play golf. He, he was brilliant at that as well. It was nice talking to Colin at the recent Teesside Open because, I mean, his throw has One changed. And he said it took him up to five years to get it. But he, he's feeling very good about his game. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he started unbelievably. He averaged in just a, a mere 152.50 with a max in the bag already. How do throws develop over time? Do you as a player feel as if you know it, or is it just something that just feels like it changes over time and you, it just, you just naturally flow with it anyway? Yeah, I mean, when you're at your best, One and Colin's exactly hundred. the same, he couldn't tell you how he threw a dart, uh, but something creeped into his game, and uh, just when you're, when you're in the pro tour and you're getting beaten up week in, week out, it's, it, it's really seven. tough. Um, when you require but he's 96. coming back, I mean... I've been looking forward to watching him play. He said he feels very good about his game. And if he checks out in this 96 here, it's an unbelievable start. Game shot in the and first that is leg. a wonderful opening because Colin that was Osborne. the perfect second dart was just missed. And he knows that I'm commentating. So he said he's put a little bit of pressure on him. But what a start. Just a mere 12. Second leg, it's Sebastian to throw first. It's okay, I suppose. There's more to come from Middlesbrough's T side number two. 38. Jamie Durham being number one, of course. I've just to make that clear, everyone. Uh, I did see the name Durham. I just needed to do a double check. Yeah. I was also keen, obviously, to, to watch Sebastian as well. And like I said, the beauty of being sat where I am one now. I'm seeing people because all I know Sebastian is uh, obviously what I saw him at the unbelievable UK Opens. Um, but he's up against an inspired Colin Osborne here with a second maximum. 100. If we can follow it up with a third here, things could get very, very interesting. That would be the fairy tale opening day for me. Ooh, the crowd go boo. And Colin very much a stacker. He, he very much relies on his first dart a lot, doesn't he? Yeah, I've been chatting about his darts, and uh, yeah, the, we've had a good chat back. You know, 20 grams, and like I said, it's working well for 60. him. And that average right now is absolutely staggering. And uh, look at the difference there with uh, poor Sebastian. I don't think he knows what's hit him. The Teesside Express is in town. 99. Yeah, 303 is usually a, 
I think you know, people go to, down to the 19s there because two treble 19s with a single would obviously be the big, the big fish. But 82, oh, and 82. another cracking finish for us dark players. We do love to start with a bullseye. And two reasons there. You know, people oh, might be too. watching, wondering why you didn't go the double double, but obviously Sebastian wasn't on a finish, and also Colin's quite old school, so he, he went just sort of the simple win, set it up nicely, and set himself up nicely for tops Two, after twelve. Eight. And Colin, whenever I say that sentence, you know you're in a good space. This is for a thirteen data on the back of a twelve, James and this has been a superstar for Colin, Colin Osborne. Osborne. He's two nil up in the flash of an eye. Thirteen dart leg, averaging one hundred and twenty. At this early stage, and if you can win this match in 25 so darts, he'll break the record average. Game on. That is unbelievable start. I, I, I'm, I'm feeling quite proud sort of watching him here, but, uh, you know, I can't have any bias here. So I've got to, so we need to talk about Bia Wetting as well. But like I say, he won't know what's hit him right now. And, uh, yeah, look at the difference in them averages. That's a staggering comparison. Aye, one. Is it much of a struggle for Bia Wetzky because he knows Osborne's playing at this level and, because he can't find anything in response, your game then lags another level as a consequence. Sometimes you can just relax. And like I said, and we've seen it today many times, you're not out of it. You know, a best of seven, you know, if, if you can just, if Colin dips at all and Sebastian plays like you know he can, you know, two nils, absolutely nothing. 140. You're absolutely right with these stack of darts. He's, uh, I mean, he used to sit them up a little bit more than this, but uh, he seems to really like that dart under the table. Another 140 there, but uh, this is some performance. Just watch how this first dart lands into the board. Well, he's, he's going to make me look like an absolute idiot now because I was hoping it was going to sit on the bottom of the treble 20 bed or just below the treble 20 bed 60. because that's where he can really work his way into a big treble visit because he could just use the lie of the first dart just to... Float it over the top. See, just needs to see out the game now. I mean, let's put perspective on this. He wants the two points. We've talked about how tough this group is. It's not about record averages. They're wonderful. But right now, it's just about he's in a position now where he should win this match. And all of a sudden, now you can start. You can be too far ahead. Uh, and he just needs to see out this game. Feels like only the second time in this match you've actually seen him have a slip away from the big segment. 134. And there's the juicy 134 again that we've seen so many times. But uh, no bias, I promise. But come on, Colin, give me it. Come on, Colin. Palm up, palm up. Oh, I would have bought him a palm. I would have even done a hot shot palm up for you, Colin. 70. You had the does a shuffle on comms? I, I could have. If there was a bit more room in here, then I, yeah, uh, what I would have done. If a nine dart happens... Just for you. 58. That is on record now, Glenn. 92. This is interesting. There's two options here. You can go the treble 20 or you can go the bullseye. And it's all the fact that Sebastian was on 136, but he felt confident Game to go that way. Third leg. This and that. Colin Osborne. Bang, bang. 3-0. He'd be feeling really good about himself. So composed. So self-confident. Uh, there he's looking in great well, shape right Sebastian now. And, uh, to throw first. Sebastian needs, needs something. And it's got to happen right now. That'll help. That's his first 140 plus throw of the game. I mean, the way the day has been going, I am not ruling out the 4 3. So, what will be, will be here. 36. Um, but these are the kind of things I'm looking at with these players now. How is Colin, who is riding the crest of a wave in this game, how is he going to see out this match? Because you can be too bad. You, you can 60. overthink in this position. And Sebastian can jump all over that. It's been a busy day here at the Super Series. We enter leg number 107 of our day. It could be the last of this match. One this, this third maximum is, uh, this is what it's all about. And it's a great sign when you've got more 180s than you certainly have hundreds and 140s. He's uh, 107 average right now. This is, uh, this is special stuff. Of course, you mentioned you want to get the victories on the board, but it will send out a marker to the rest of the field. He's relentless. Hey, the treble 20 there would have left a lovely finish there for him. But again, it's advantage Osborne in this leg here. Sebastian, you need something to happen and you need it right now, sir. 
140. That'll do it. Leaves himself 1 2 1 after 12. Osborne will love a 140 here. He knows he's got to finish in six darts here, so it's, it's, it's minimum a ton. And as we talked about, he, I think he sort of prefers that dart just below the. He sort of struggles when it's just right. a little bit above there. 21. So 1 2 1 is a bullseye as he's going to the top. He's going to have treble 17. 84, so that's treble 16. 53. That would have left a, a double 18 finish. And is it going to be a champagne finish for the fantastic match here for Colin? Bureksky will return for 68 to get a leg on the board. Up against a rampant Osborne 60. who's come out the traps flying. He requires 68. I think he maybe should have gone downstairs there, especially after finishing on 96, 92 earlier. And double 16 for his first leg of the night. Game shot the that's what it's all about. Sebastian Bale. can't Wexley. rule out that this one's going to go all the way, but that's exactly what Sebastian needed. And there's no better feeling uh, to, you know, to get your Collins first double, uh, double in out the way. Game um, on. Colin's still in total control, still averaging over 100, but still work to do. Showed a lot of maturity as well. A lot of composure because he's had a barrage against him so far Aye, in this game. One. He's only ever really had that one opportunity and the chance he took. And it's a totally different practice room tonight, you know, compared to this afternoon where we had big characters one in there this afternoon. But uh, when you talk about being reserved and being shy, that's exactly what I've written down about Sebastian. It, it just seems really focused on his own game. But you're just going to find out what he's really about now. When you're 3-0 down and your opponent's averaging 105-plus, it's just... And you find out a little bit about yourself, and that's exactly what we're finding out right now. I think it'd be fair to suggest that we've Be seen these flashes of Bioretsky, maybe not consistent patches of his brilliance this week. No, it's, it, this game's been all about Colin, uh, but what, what I've learned about today that these best of sevens, you know, it's never, it, it's never over, and there'd be no surprise for me now for Sebastian to kick in uh, because Colin's scoring's beginning to desert, and because he can see that winning line, it's uh, sometimes you're, you're better off being in a three-two game. It's not as easy as you think when you're three 0 up because your mind wanders. Fifth, the I just get the feeling that's where it's happened right now. Colin could do with one really big score right now. Dark players didn't have a brain. The game would be easy. This is exactly what he's doing. 140. At the 140 is exactly what I call there for him because he'll be feeling great about himself because he needs a minimum two doubles. He really needs to fill it up here, Sebastian. 134. That's exactly what he's done. So he's got another another one of them finishes that we all love. Full focus here for Colin on this 160 for the match. 100. Tunnel two, unless Bioretsky can take out the 152. He's already done it this week in a crucial situation. Won't do this time. Well, he's going to give Colin something. He's certainly giving Colin something to think about Colin now. Requires 60. But the first dart's the crucial one here. You just, we already seen it earlier on today where someone busted by it, but that's the perfect dart. Just sitting on top of that now. Game shot and that was an absolutely outstanding game by Colin Osborne. A 97.7 average, the highest average of the day. A staggering 80% on the checkout. Job done. He'll be going back to the practice room. One very happy man. Indeed. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we're going to see Matt Dennett in action for the first time this evening. He's the last player to play in Group B. And he takes on Scott Williams shortly.
Good evening and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth where we've just seen Colin Osborne with a wonderful start to his evening. 4-1 victory over Sebastian Biowetsky in that one. There you can see he's had the highest average of the day so far. He came out of the blocks really, really quickly. A 12-dart leg to take the opener and he really motored from there really. Of all the players involved tonight, former world champion quarterfinalist Osborne has the best finishing percentage as you can see 80% on the outer ring in that match four out of five on the doubles a really clinical display from him to start the evening and get his first two points of the evening in group B next up we've got Matt Dennant against Scott Williams of course Scott Williams coming through that last leg decider in his opening match this is the first we're going to see of Dennant at our brand new venue let's see how he gets on Pretty Predictions from you two in the commentary box. No surprise, Abby. I'm going to enjoy the splinters and sit on the fence on this one. But what's your thoughts on this one, Glenn? Well, I, I, obviously, I know Scott Williams very well, but I don't think I've ever met Matt Dennant. I don't think I've ever uh, come across the guy. Uh, so I guess I'll be watching him for the first. Oh, Matt Dennant. Yes, but yeah, obviously, it, I mean, this story I must have told more than anything ever. Uh, but but I guess, you know, the, the kid missed three darts at double 16 and would have ended my PDC career forever because I would never have gone back to Q school. I always sort of made that statement. So it is insane when you sort of self-reflect and you, you sort of look back. But uh, we did have a laugh backstage there, and I think he's sick of the question as much as I am as well now. But uh, I just wish him all the best. Indeed, he's the last player with a five to hey, first, tow the hockey to this evening. And we're Hang having a look on. at his record in this tournament between the games during the break. And it's his second opportunity in this phase. He finished third in week four, a week which was won by nice. Dal Pilgrim. Three. Josh Payne was the runner up in that week as well. And it seems that every single time he plays here at the Super Series or at its predecessor tournament, the Live League, he tends to get through to Saturday. You probably put the mockers on that straight away now, but uh, what I, the, the stat that I found interesting, they were both very no, similar in averages, uh, you know, sort of through every game they play, but both won around about 57% of the game, so you know you could argue it's a real level, but Scott's had that, that advantage. One hundred and eighty. He's had that advantage of playing already, and I just that is just absolutely sensational. Uh, the blind one eighty, but go on, Matt, give him it. One hundred and eighty. I would have looked away, but. What a start to the, tonight's proceedings. It's just been unbelievable. Uh, and these aren't disappointing already. And just You can just see the way the darts are going in the board and everything now. They've all settled. They all feel great. This is good fun already. Well, Scott Williams is going to return for 96. And no doubt he'll definitely look at every single dart in this turn. Will he, though? 43. Scott, you require 96. I've got a funny feeling of a double double here. No, it doesn't. 50. You're right to think so, Glenn. Matt, but he might 90. not win the leg because Dennett wants 90 here. The Gerwin, the Gerwin Price finish of the World Series of Darts. Bullseye. 65. Scott, you require 40. So Williams returns to tops after 12 for a break of throw in the opening leg. I like watching him there. He just sort of reset. 30. But no, them big points there. They're just Matthew sticking away a couple 25. of millimetres away from the desired target there. And we talked so much about this finish this afternoon, didn't we? It's incredible how, how often we're finishing on 25. Games, you're and on the that's first. That's exactly leg. where he finishes. Because Matt it's one of them finishes that us players, because we missed the ball, and so many of the top players practice on that finish. And uh, it's an amazing Second how many times at 25 first. will be a winning Game score on. to win the match there. And. Uh, Matty opens proceedings with that opening leg. Survived a bit of a scare One from Scott Williams. He saw out the storm. It would have been a break of throw for Scott as well, so he'd be, probably be super frustrated. Stood behind Nine, him there. Uh, and Matty's quite relentless once he gets going. He seems to be a bit of a real front runner as well, does Matt? Ninety-three. What's interesting? players did you know 
is he sat thinking, Scott, about that, you know, them doubles there or is it already done? You know, that, that's the kind of different mindset that players have. It's interesting to get in people's brains how they play, but he stood there oh, sort of he messing about with his darts. I'm always keen to find out what they're thinking right now. And 308 is a, a standard way of going now. Of going for the 18th 17. first dart. Again, he's maximising his opportunities to get down to a finish there. And he's well ahead in this leg. Uh, but two trebles there from Matt. 160. And that's wonderful counting as well, because even if he did the 25 there, it was still left to finish there. This really is a quality encounter. And Scott Williams would have been praying for 171. Mate, you were 145. I've seen some funny ways of going for 145 the, this afternoon. So, but again, used in the 19s, both players here. 57. Scott, you require one 110, 106. which I thought was pretty relentless in the last one. I wonder if he's feeling exactly the same. This time going in the 17s. Double 18. Game shot on the second leg. We called Scott it there, the Williams. 110. He just felt like as he approached the hockey, he knew he was going to get that. And I just had that same feeling there uh, when he wanted that double 18. And that's just a sign of someone who's just so brilliant. Matt to throw first. 99.2 average for Williams. This is a quality contest here. 130. It was tough to watch at times this afternoon with so many missed doubles, so many averages in the 70s. And you know, just tonight's been so refreshing. It's just the One scores are there, the finishing. 180. There. It is. Um, I was a little bit concerned that we built tonight up so much, but both, you know, all five players right now are playing absolutely. 134. Out there this is what we've been looking forward to all day. This is what we've been looking forward to since last Friday. Why didn't you look away, man? You don't blink and you'll miss it. Even though he was on for the nine to one hundred and seventy-one sixty-two finish. This is a, this is an incredible match right now that you're witnessing. In this leg alone, Matt, you're seven 62. treble 19s. It's been the sort of the story for all the players tonight. For a 62 finish, double 16. 30. Scott, you require 123. And how many times have I said don't miss double 16 to Matt Dennant? Could he go for the treble 18? He hasn't. So Matt has got that chance of three darts in his one. hand. Matt, you require 32. To take a real positive stride in this match, to take a 2 1 lead. Game show on the third exactly leg. what he's done there, Henry. In his quality contest. Both are playing. Scott's averaging 104.36 and, and, and losing. Uh, but it's Matt Dennant. Uh, Four -legged with Scott a, with a max first. under the belt and a 96.48 average. This is a quality contest. And despite the brilliance of Williams, Dennant is doing exactly what he 60. needs to do with the darts. Timing. That's what a lot of game is all about. And uh, no better player than James Wade for, you know, timing should be his nickname. Uh, it just does it better than anybody, 42. and that's the difference right now. He's just doing the right things, and that one seven one in the last match, in the last leg, sorry, was the decider. His cover shooting has been exceptional. That one three four score again. I think uh, I'll go to bed tonight just dreaming of one three fours. That's oh, so many times that's been hit. One hundred. He looks like he's in his own mat. Doesn't matter sort of what Scott does. I think he's just doing his own thing, but he's gritting his teeth right now. And this is just one hundred and eighty. Just look at his throw. You know, just all I'm asking from, you know, just his follow through, his body movement, and you know, that's his third max. Ninety-six. Scott, you record one hundred and twenty-seven. He likes the use of that seventeens, doesn't he? Seventy-three. He's missed the big. He missed the big eighteen there. But he'd be very happy where he has. You know, the fifty-four after. Fifty-four after twelve darts is absolutely perfect. Eighty-five. Scott, you require fifty-four. So on for a potential fourteen data. First objective will be the fourteen. He looks a little bit animated, but there's no need to him. This is what we call this and that. Is it the big number, double 10? 34. That incredible long point there. You can just tell straight away whether it's in or, or not. So 
has Matt got a little bit of luck on his side now? Can he do something with this 178 to make Scott think about it? 60. Possibly not. So, so Scott Williams 20. returns for 2-2. Two, two. This exhilarating game, game which is seesaw in one Scott way or the Williams. next. But the dominance has been with the throw. Two apiece. Best of three is Dennant with the darts in leg five. He's been really proficient when he has approach. had the throw in this match. Game on. Talked an awful lot about match play darts, you know, the best of seven. And even though there's such a big difference, hey, 10 point seven. difference, you've hit the nail on the head there just at the right time on his throw. And if Matty, obviously, it's an obvious statement, but if he wins his darts on his throw, he wins the match. Nine, he won. How good is Scott in that treble? 17, by the way. Every single time he's run Nine, for cover, he's he found something. A great shot of his throw there. That's side on view there. It's cl it's classic. And I, I, I remember talking to the pro to where he just made the game. You know, he sat down for a while, just got up, pinged a 180. It just the game just is so easy to him. Now it's all about mindset. 60. Now it's all about driving his career forward. And uh, he's been given these opportunities in the challenge too. He's been given these opportunities at the Super Series, and he's grabbing them with both hands. Well, most circumstances he would have gone downstairs but he needed the 140 to leave the fish then it will stay on the 19s seven of them in the last leg so he's, he's playing really well there 133 Absolutely perfect set up there for matt and it leaves the big 170. he may have to take it because williams has made some huge inroads on the dead and throw it's just the way them darts are sitting for him but matt can you do it not with a first dart like that you can't we talked an awful lot this afternoon. Scott, you require seven. We've got the 70 finish, the 64 finish. And once again, these are the kind of things I want people to notice. This is what you should be practicing double eight. 54. Now you require 88. It's already the day 88. It's, it's a finish as dark players do life, so treble 20. And it gives them the opportunity of playing with a bullseye now. 49. Scott, you're and so this is 16. for the break for Scott Williams. Double eight to put him one away. Nice enough marker. And that's come in and out of the double. Eight. And that's gone on the other side. Could that be a game-changing moment as Dennett returns a 39 for 39. hold of throw when his darts has been under the most severest of threats? You do need that bit of luck, and he's got that double yeah, 16. He's on the fifth leg. You don't care Matt exactly Dennis. what Scott does there. He just focused on the job, the 39 finish. He does it in two darts. He wins his throw once again by hook or by crook. Six it's he Scott got there, and he's leading three to Game two. on. Scott Williams is just going to have to shake that off, move it away, put it to the back of his mind, because that did Six. go in and out of the double, and maybe... The long points didn't help him on that particular occasion. Absolutely. Pros and cons of everything. And uh, it, like I said, it's how he reacts from that. It, he has been the better player. The stats will tell you that. Um, but it's Matt who's leading. And in a group like this, every point counts. Every win counts. And Matt will probably be feeling very... He he he's lucky to be in front now, but he doesn't care. And he knows he's got the dart in the last leg as well. That's always the beauty of this kind of leg. It feels like... It doesn't matter if I lose this one, one you know, in the last leg. I've got them darts there. So he's on a bit of a free roll. If you don't want to be giving this man any confidence. I mean, he's confident enough as it is. One hundred. It's control confidence. That's what I've learned about Scott tonight. It's, it's control. He's not, he's not as brash as, you know, as, as, as they expected him to be. And, uh, it's just nice to sort of get to know him a little bit different. And, uh, yeah. But with that type of throw there, he can go as far as he wants to. It's about hard work One and dedication. 100. Uh, making sure he's just getting his practice and getting his experience right. And he seems to be doing everything like that correctly. 59. 146 is here to make it 3-3. Three, three. Both players are using the 19s more than anybody. So this, this is an opportunity. Uh, <laughs> trying to read these players to do it. 90. You're surprised so, he went that way. I am surprised, but it did leave 74 the last one. And so, you know, by getting a couple of treble 20s, I mean, they're all thinking of finishing now. 
fave. Sets the up H something interesting if he does. 56. Sort of miss there, but you don't you don't expect him to miss these types. The old Murph King way. Game shot on the sick flag. And incredibly, and Scott obviously Williams. it's another three-three game. It's just uh, might as well just go at the bookies and put four-three in every single match. But that's quality double two there. Seventh um, and final leg. It's it Matt to throw it beautifully, uh, and it's Matty's dad. Matt Game on. Just thinking. Just give me a fifteen data. If you want to beat me, Scott, go on at the twelve data. Should we pop a sleeping bag in the commentary box? It's hard work, isn't it? Nine, four, three, 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 four, four, three. I promise you, this doesn't happen every session, but we like this to happen every session because you get close games, quality darts, One, just like that. You don't mind when it's a four threes when you're seeing darts like we're seeing tonight. He's back averaging over. Just, just shy of 97 now is Scott. 94. Dare I dream of my nine darter. Dare I dream. Carry on. Dream on. 140. Look away, Scott. That's twice now. You can blink and miss it because Big won't miss it. Our referee today. Both so proficient on that treble 19. You know, they've both been a joy on that. Now, this is uh, this is where it's really nitty gritty time there. But he's left himself a two dart finish. Matty will be just thinking, give me a ton. 140 to be beautiful. He'd love another one of them, and it's set up plum for it. And the 85 for Scott Williams has to go to put the curtain down on a fantastic game here. One dart at the bullseye. Matt, you require 40. And what a fantastic opportunity, Matt. If he stood there behind him, don't shout. He's got three darts at double top for the match. Big, big two points, big dart. No score. And he's not up to the job. He's got your required 25. And so Williams wants 25 now. Game Two sixes the to win the match by Scott four legs Williams. to three. A quality encounter once again. Scott Williams wins it with the most unconventional 25 you will see this week. With an average of 96.03. Four maximum to his name. This group really is coming up to the boil early on. He'll want to work out or check out the checkout percentages because you might want to work on that. Fourth and 16, 25%, and a high checkout of 106. But for Scott Williams, he is now two from two at the beginning of Group B. Is he beginning to emerge? Is the man to beat? We're going to find out as the night goes on. When we return after this short break, it's going to be match four of our night as Nathan Gervin takes on Colin Osborne.
welcome back to the Moda Super Series where we've just seen Scott Williams come through another last leg decider having to survive even more match darts in that one from Matt Dennant there you can see the average is 96 for Scott Williams in that one we really did hype this group up at the start of the night and it is not disappointing at all all five players giving a great account of themselves so far there we can see the table it is Scott Williams on four points after two games Colin Osborne of course has the opportunity to join him in our next match these two players Colin Osborne and Nathan Gurdon have met on the challenge tour a few times Colin Osborne coming out the winner in all of those in fact Nathan just taking three legs off Colin in those three matches can he get four tonight and get the win over Colin Osborne what do you think lads Thank you very much, Abby. And it will be interesting to see how Nathan Gervin responds in this one up against a Colin Osborne who averaged 97.7 in that opening 4-1 win against Sebastian Bioretsky. Four out of five on the doubles and three 180s. There was not much not to like from that performance. And for Nathan Gervin, he'll want to get a victory quickly because I just sense the first win for him in this group is important because of what happened yesterday. I'm just thinking now, who's going to win the match 4-3? Is it going to be Colin or is it going to be Nathan? Because uh, you just feel like every game right now is just going to go all the way. Uh, and when you see these two types of players, it's very potential it can go all that way. But uh, yeah, it's more of a big uh, a match for Nathan rather than Colin. He needs to get himself on the board. I mean, he's, his last five matches now in the Super Series, he has lost four of them. Um, Probably needs a catalyst now, really, to sort right, of first it's Nathan to throw Maybe no better way than have beaten the wizard. Game on. So then after this, four of the five players would have... Well, three of the five players would have played two matches. They would have been halfway through their evening, and then we'll reach the halfway point in game five when Sebastian Biorecki takes on Matt Dennant. 60. I'm finding it interesting how quiet the practice room is compared to this afternoon. Five totally different characters uh, tonight. Uh, seems a lot more focused. Uh, and it's no surprise that you know some of the average that we're getting to uh, tonight has been absolutely staggering. Speaking to one or two of the lads in that practice room before the session got underway, and one they all know the quality that's on the show this evening. They've all been very open in their appraisal of this field this evening. And they know that they've got to be right at it tonight. And I think there's a real focus because of that. Yeah, there's like a lot of respect, isn't there? I know we've already talked about the sort of Scott Williams and what he's been saying, but this, it's just a nice feeling when you go in there. Uh, this afternoon was more joyous and big characters. 60. And, you know, tonight it just seems like, a, it feels like a TV, PDC TV tournament backstage. You know, everyone just sort of doing their own thing in, in a respectable way. Would you, could you imagine Scott Williams against Aaron Monk here on Saturday night? I, I'd like to see Aaron or even, you know, JK, uh, Kellen, uh, um, both can bring crowds as well because they both live locally. I think if we can get their audience pretty full. I'm a kid in a sweet shop this week. Dartshop.tv, the place to go to to claim your free tickets as well for a Saturday night at the darts here. And the Modus Live Lounge in Portsmouth as Nathan Gervin leaves 52 after 15 to win the opening leg with throw here against Osborne. Half the job is done here for Nathan. That was a, a lovely setup. Uh, Mate, you, uh, you, don't, you don't think Colin's going to miss the 81, and his mindset now should be nothing but double 16. Game and shot in the first. These are the opportunities, and this Nathan time he takes it. These are the opportunities that will make the difference between winning and losing this match. And it just, once again, using that word, that maturity, Secondly, it's Colin which hasn't been going his way, Game on. but he's not frightened. I'm just looking at his demeanour now. It's good. He's focused. He's confident. And he's uh, he's held his throw there. And his focus now is to time to break Colin and really One sort of hundred. use this game to, to drive this tournament forward for himself because he's right in the mix still. Because Colin won't give anything away. Very good poker face. Every now and then, if he's a little bit of a you may get the odd bit here and there from him, but keeps himself very level. He's from Middlesbrough anyway, hey, so he's, uh, he won't be giving too much away. 
nearly as tight as me. Oh, do you want? I tell you what, I, had, I, I like about Nathan's throw. It's, it, it, it's the way he's pulling the dart back, and I've, I've got a funny feeling that could be the, the Chris Mason uh, sort of effect, and that's what he's been working with. Obviously, when I played with him and seen him play, his throw is like a, a million times better as he's as he's grown, as he got taller. But it's this little section there, it's so much smoother than when I last saw uh, Nathan playing, and I think that's the reason why he's one hundred and he's scoring and playing like he is. He's um, yeah, he's impressed me. I mentioned to Chris Murphy earlier on in the week that his action to me feels very similar to that of Nathan Aspinall. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a little bit smoother uh, than w when I saw when I saw Nathan playing on I think the Monday or the Tuesday when he was really exceptional. He was no, really he smooth. There was no jerkiness. Whereas Nathan Aspinall has got that little jump the way he goes there. That treble four uh, it was a handy little miss there, wasn't it? That sets up the uh, big fish just for me. One hundred. Just stuck his head in here and said, "I will check out in a big one seventy for you here, Glenn." But you owe me one large hot shot palm or So come on, can you do it, Mister Wizard? No, you can't. And for the second 42. time in this match, Nathan's left Maybe himself fifty-two. Will it be the same outcome? First out, yes. Game shot. Second, second out, then. also yes. Nathan. This is Gerber. a great start for the young man. Exactly what he wanted. Keeps himself right in the mix of this very, very tight group. So look, it's and Nathan to like throw first. Because three from five are going through, each win is doubly important tonight. And the sheer focus on his face is something to be admired. One Every now and then hundred. you see that little bit of frustration for him or the elation when he wins legs, but he's kept himself very level in this match. It's very business-like from Gervin. 19-year-old. 19 year old one you know, the talent 100. that's out there right now it's uh it's insane and uh he's right in the mix 57 i mean if you could put the best 12 eligible players together for a week here that's that next gen level you're going to see some wicked talents yeah but nathan would go deep in in that i feel confident if you know, against many of the young players, obviously Luke Little is another one of the target lads as well. Who was uh, playing in the pentathlon today, and he was leading, uh, going won halfway it. through. Did he win it? Well, there's there's another prestigious young talent, and uh, well, he's probably one of the hey, best teenagers great. I've ever seen. Uh, I remember seeing Michael Van Gerwen very young. I think it was in the Finland Open or Norway, somewhere like that, a 14, 15 year old, and. Luke reminds me, Leighton Bennett uh, was a real talent. Bo Greaves, you know, the, them players, Six. these young players coming through. But uh, Nathan, I'd put him up against anyone on his day. And if Luke is superstitious, Neil Duff won that title last year. I think he won an event in April somewhere, didn't he? Nine. Uh, he won. Yes. Uh, only good players ever win that, you know. Did you ever play in that, Glenn? Um, did I play in it? Um, I'm, mm, I, I'm like Uncle Albert. I never like to talk about it. One Chewing the leg side. You require <laughs> 170. So come on, 170 finish. This is, this is ex exactly the type of finish I want to see today. But one surprise me to see that. 96. One, three, four. But he set it up nicely. Colin, you require 101. The wizard, the wizard really needs to get back. So it's either going to be treble 20 or treble 19. We've all got our ways on this one. He's gone very traditional, treble 19. And you can see Nathan's licking his lips behind. Colin won't be rushed for him. That's the experience there. And he won't be rushed for anybody. Oh, but Nathan will be feeling good. He's at 252 finishes. He'll be feeling very confident with his 74. The ball's eye. It wasn't far away for 3 0, and so Osborne returns for 56, Colin, similar to the range that Nathan Gervin has been finishing in this match for a break back and to make it 2 1. And it's been all about that first start with many of the players. Game shot on the third. When that first start goes Colin in, it's been key, and uh, they're not sort of missing the doubles. Uh, Colin is on 100%, one out of one, and Nathan's on a very acceptable 50%. Well, it's Colin to uh, the throw doubles have been great by all of us tonight, I must say. Um, what do you think of another 4 3 then? Inevitable. 85. You can see the frustration on that last start. There's nothing worse when you 
Your first dart is plum treble 20, and you don't get a three-figure score. There. 60. I don't know what that feels like, Glenn. <laughs> and, of course, you can have a bet on all 10 games right, this evening, but if you are 18 plus... Be gambleaware.org when the fun stops. Stop. Very important message. One hundred. He's just quietly going on his business, is Nathan here? Uh, Colin's got some work to do in this leg. But work that he does. One hundred. So another one eighty there. He hit three in his last game. That's his fourth of the night. Just what the doctor ordered at this stage of the game. 100. Well, that Colin third McCormick dart was a squeezer. 51. We've talked an awful lot about the importance of this fourth leg, and it's uh, it's exactly what's going on. So it's either treble 17 or treble 13. 93. Might play with Nick Gervin back on 2 for one So 50. Eight now for Osborne. These finishes in around the 50s have been a very popular well, mark for the players thus far. There's been a 52 twice, a 56, and now we've got a 58. But once again, it's over that first start, plum in the middle. You Game expect this to go in. That's exactly what both Colin players are Osborne. doing there. The clutch finishing of both have been absolutely fantastic in this match. And Collins' average on the checkout is still on that 100%. We've got Nathan to throw first. And both players look so comfortable. On throw. Those are the averages on your screen now. 90.87 for Gervin. 88.28 for Colin Osborne, having hit the game's only maximum. We should have just started off at three each. You know, let's let's cut let's cut out the middleman. One hundred. Another great shot. I like that side view with the players' throws there. One hundred and eighty. Thing with his fingers there, and you just felt that another maximum was coming there, and that's uh, it's just a great feeling when the way they're sitting, the way they're going in, and it's just at the right time. We've talked about an awful lot about timing, and that's his first one eighty of this. One hundred. He's found the flow here, Nathan Gervin. Oh, the last he leg eight. and a half, he's upped it. Even though Osborne won the last leg, something has clicked. He's just, flicked the switch. You just feel he's a real momentum player, don't you? And that 180 was just a real catalyst once again for him. And 180, we're going 130. It's like hundreds are not enough for you for Colin. He's, you know, he's playing lovely. Nine darts, 201. He's up and against an inspired. What would you do here? 90. It's good thinking. 19-year-old. That is so clever because he probably wanted to go a big 20, but there was also the option there that he could pop into a deflected treble 20. Osborne heads downstairs down to Chevel 19 with the Chevel 20 bed obscured. But he's left himself 159. That's a criminal error. Gervin returns to tops. Game there it is. A 3 2. And he's a leg away. But Colin Osborne was lucky that that actually went in. Otherwise, he would have been left on 159. Sigler gets Colin to throw first. Game on. So we know it's 3-2 now, so no, we know exactly what's going to happen in this leg now. And a wonderful start here from the Wizard. One Satisfying start of a 180, 3-2 down. You can't do any more than that. Nathan probably will already be thinking of the last leg. 62. I'm saying nothing. I am saying absolutely nothing. One Get in there. Come on, Ozzy. Come on, son. No bias, Glenn. No bias. Stay cool, Glenn. 140. Cool. Colin, you're 140. Stay cool, Glenn. Come on, come on, wizard. Come on. Oh. Glad you left T-side now. <laughs> T-side number three. How many T-side ranking seven. points would he have won for the nine data, incidentally? I would have let him have one of my 214 trophies. 99. 
it's really Colin important. Now he's got 84. six darts and 84. We, are, we, we knew it was going to go 4 3 anyway. Treble 20 or treble 16 is the shot because he's on 64. He got the 16s and a big 16 will leave tops. 44. So he's set, he's done everything right that he needed to do in this leg now. Now he just has to put the dart away. Not a lot hey, of pressure G6. coming back there, apart from that last Colin dart there. 40. Osborne's a big favourite for this leg now. He's three darts at tops. And he's bent the wire there. He has bent the wire. It's probably done him no favours being so close to tops there. Your one and one these are the kind 40. of finishes that us dar players like it. I would normally say it would be a treble 20 start, but these players today have been all over the place. And what a start that is, Henry. Tops of the match. I think you spoke too loud there, Henry. 74. Did you fancy that? Well, you required 20. I, I fancied it, yeah, yes. I fancied that. But this is no gimme. Under the pressure he's under now, it's a must hit. And nobody likes double five. Nobody. And he's bent that wire again. Ten. He bent that. That's twice in this leg. He's bent the wire. Nathan, and that is the difference 40. between taking it all the way. Nathan is stood back there now, nice and composed. Tops for the match. With two points on the board. Double ten. Go and what a finish that match. is for a fantastic Nathan match. Nathan Absolutely delighted there for Nathan. He apologises, don't ever do that. But the respect on the stage there between them. A lovely 91.91 average for Nathan. It's a 180 during the game and a 40% check out there. Both players will probably go off the stage there really happy. Both are in this competition. And next up, we've got Sebastian Biowecki against Matty Dennant.
Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth, where we've just seen another fantastic contest. Nathan Gervin picking up his first two points of the evening in Group B, a 4-2 victory over Colin Osborne in that one. He's been impressive in both of his games so far. There we see another average in excess of 90, of course, Gervin, the only player so far to average in excess of a tonne this week. He took out four of his 10 attempts at double in that match. And we can see what that's done to the league table with him picking up his first win of the evening. He's on two points. Scott Williams, of course, is still our leader on four points. Sebastian Biawetsky and Matt Dennant, the two players yet to pick up a victory. And without wanting to make too bold a prediction, given that they're playing each other in the next match, I'm going to say that one of them will get their first victory of the evening. Of course, Matt Dennant missing match darts to beat Scott Williams in his opener. He needs to forget about that now. That's why I'm speaking a little bit quieter, because he is stood just behind me on the stage. So let's hand over to Henry and to Glenn to guide us through this one. Thank you, Abby. As you say, one player will get off the mark by the end of this game as Sebastian Biowetsky takes on Matt Dennett. Biowetsky, who finished third in Group A earlier on this week, up against Dennett, who began his campaign hey, with a 4 3 defeat to Scott Williams there. in that fantastic game, game a couple of matches ago. So he hasn't had too long to think about that defeat and get himself ready for this one, but that might actually be a good thing, Glenn. Yeah, you would think Matty's hey, coming at this game it. feeling a little bit better than Sebastian. You know, certainly not at his high-level game right now. And uh, like I say, Matty had a tremendous game and opening up fantastically One well already. On 180. What a night the dart has been so far. Unbelievable. You literally cannot get a better start than that without sounding Alan Partridge. We did talk about Sebastian sort of off there, that where he's very capable of a 96, 97 average, but he's also got that Dip in his leg. Oh, it was in the treble as well, that second let dart. Let him have the dart back. Just press rewind and let him have it back. It's impressive still. 75. There's someone, with a, there's someone with a hammer behind that board. I guarantee that is a dart board and not a trampoline. Three darts in the board gets a corner or two. That's exactly what Matty's got there. Needs that treble 20. 59. Right, you've Six, da six darts from 141. Doesn't have to move. Well, he might decide to now. I think a lot of players in that position, Henry, would have maybe utilised the bullseye there, sort of. Just play the percentages. I'm not really sure where that first dart went. So I'm not to worry about Sebastian there, but that's a lovely sort of recovery. Game shot in the what first we leg. Superb finishing Matt tonight, Dennis. aren't we? Absolute quality. The last game was all about that clutch two dart finishing, but uh, it's a great feeling when you're, you're on so 94, you went aggressive, he went the treble 18 route, and he was rewarded there to take the lead in this game, and more importantly, you break a throw. He just looks so assured, Fair doesn't he, Matt not. Day? He looks so comfortable on that stage. And perhaps without disrespect, he would have been one of those players who's played a lot in pro tour environments, challenge tour environments, played in the old room in Southampton, oh, maybe six. not played on the stage so much. So we're wondering how he's going to adapt to this environment when he's taken to it like a duck to water. You've got to, you've got to take whatever positives you've got. You know, and he's oh, been here fine. before, and you feel like Sebastian's sort of in a in a different world right now, but let me tell everybody who's watching here that Sebastian Biawetsky is a fabulous player. Nine darts at the UK Open, a quarter final this year. You know, the guy can play darts. That's why I'll so strong this field tonight. And as I mentioned earlier on this evening, Scott Nine Williams, who's a Pro Tour winner this year, is on his second chance, his last chance to qualify. He was involved earlier on in this phase and didn't qualify. He had to stay there because the opportunity of a finish there, but you can see he was trying to bully his way through two darts, but it's big advantage now to Dennant. 121. 
Could we have called that his third if that went in because of the phantom dart? Why not? We can call anything we want, but that's a lovely second dart there. Maguire, 89. This is what it's all been about, this 89, this, these finishes around there, but it looks like he's going to be using the bullseye. 64. How many times have I said that today? But this 110, Scott Williams made it look so easy earlier on today. That's a strange way of going. Game shot but it's effective. Second. It gets him Sebastian on the board. Bielwetsky. Now he'll be feeling really good about himself. And levels up at 1-1. One, one. And a break of throw as well, where Matt Dennett was looking, looking to potentially to solidify Game things on. in this match. And despite the early dominance on Dennett, we are back level at one apiece. Thanks to that fantastic finish from Biowetsky. And those are the averages, a seven-point disparity. I'm pleased for Sebastian there, uh, and I really expected him to kick on there. I'm really surprised to see him open up with the 43 42. there. Like it usually happens, the person follow does exactly the same. Someone can really get a grip of this game right now, and uh, he's the one three four that I've seen so many times today. 34. Staggering amount. Just play on the treble 19, boys. 100. What a, what a feeling. Sorry, Henry, what a feeling it is when you score 100 with your last dart compared to 100 with your first dart. It's, you walk 90. away considering it's the same score. And similar to that there, I mean, them three darts were swayed all over, but that last there just snuck into the treble 20. And sometimes you just feel maybe it's my day now. Since that these are crucial visits, Someone can really take a stranglehold of this game. 41. And I feel like despite everything that Dennett did well in the first couple of legs, the game is now an even kilter. You're right. It's a 48. pivotal moment, but you have it. You have it. You have it. They're both getting opportunities, but they're not taking them. That would have been a good opportunity to say to me, to you there, but... Uh... 97. A much better last dart. Needs a two dart finish. For Biowetsky. There's pressure on this score right now. So much pressure, he drops his dart. 58. Sebastian, you require 96. Let's see, we might even get the double double again. No need. Double 18 to take a 2 1 Game lead. Game's on the third leg. Right Sebastian in the middle of the 18 there. Exactly what he wanted. And look at the bounce in his step as he goes back there. Instead of the head down, the head's up now. A well, sip like of water is feeling good first. about himself. Game on. It was just a holder throw. But now we'd be sat there thinking it's that fourth leg, the one we've talked about so much all day today, how important this fourth leg can be, 32. the difference between 2-2 two, two and 3-1. And he's got the opportunity because that's a poor start once again from Matty. And we're seeing a spring in the step from Biowetsky, which perhaps we didn't see in that Opening game, the 4-1 defeat to Colin Osborne. Fifty-nine. You feel like Ratajki has sort of opened the door for these Polish players coming through now. It's, uh, you know, when you go to Poland, when you go to Romania, Hungary, and obviously the, the Germanys of this 58. world, it's, it's so exciting to play darts uh, over there. I had a wonderful time at the Poland Open. and. So many players are coming through thanks to people like Christoph. Right in saying they have a tournament out there Aye, called the Police three. Masters. Yeah, I've got I've got the trophy in the house. Yeah. More important, it was 70 pence. 70 pence a pint. And the strongest pint. I've, I arrived late. I had two pints. I think it felt like I'd woke up with, after having a, a skinful. That's uh that's where I remember the Polish open. Don't drink the beer. I tried 60. to cash in a check actually at the police masters. They wouldn't give me the bill. The bum, liking it. For the attention of Matt Edgar, you're right, his puns are terrible. Apparently no, the production team have actually got a uh, a pun on Scott Williams, who's nicknamed Shaggy, but it, was, it wasn't me. <laughs> 100. Sebastian, you require 100. One away, what do you think, on the 19s again? You'd think so, wouldn't you? Needs to find a way to claw it into the treble 19. 
Game shot on the fourth lap. And it found its way into the Sebastian trouble, and it found Bielwetzky. its way into the double, and Sebastian Bielewetzki opens up a 3-1 lead over Matt Dennett, and now he has the throw for a 4-1 win. And like who would have thought this midway through the second leg? Game on. Yeah, he took real control, but couldn't just see there if that second treble 19 was in, but the finish of the double 16, it was clinical. And he looks a different player. One hundred. the whole demeanour of him. Look at the bounce in that step now. His head was down earlier, and uh, all of a sudden he's averaging, like you said, he's well capable of average mid-90s, and he's beginning to show his form. None of us really tipped him to get through this point. group. Um, he's quite, like I say, he's quite shy backstage. He just does his own thing. He's beginning to show his, what he's all about. 58. Matt Denham with it all to do here. One hundred and thirty. That'll help. He's got to break twice here to secure the win. Both players could start on the nineteens here. Three or three, two, three, one. It's sort of conducive to go and dart. And that does leave the one seventy finish. And the two, three, one. It's on the old-fashioned route. Wow. Why not when you can throw darts like that? It's absolutely fantastic. But what a way this would be to take the match. So Denham will return for 3-2. And what a camera angle that was as well of that Nine, maximum. 95, mate, you require 51. Turn 51 before the break. The first of two he needs. Double 16. 90. Is not there. And Bioretsky returns. Requires 75. For 75 for the match. Treble 17 would be the dart. Double 12. Oh, ouch. Double three down the bottom of the board. Take your time, Sebastian. Make sure you know what you're going for. Eyes on the prize. 69. I mean, I never talk about it, but I did win well, a Lakeside once on uh, double three. But uh, like Uncle Albert, I never talk about it. Double 16 to bring Matty back into this game. A game after the first leg, he looked like he was in total control, but now he seems to be fighting with himself now. The angle's changed here. Game shot on the fifth leg. What a dart that is. Not I bet that dense. dart was thrown from over eight foot. And it brings him back to the old classic four threes on its way. Just what the doctor See, ordered there Matt for the throw first. And It's his dart now. He needed Game two on. breaks in three legs of darts. He's done the first part. Second part now is to hold your own. Shall we go and get some food? Because we know that Matt Finn, Dennis is going to win this seven. leg and it's going to be free free. I told you earlier. Let's scrap. The, let's just make it a one dart shootout, everyone. Sebastian Bielewski will have other ideas, One and that start will give him a head start in this leg. One hundred. The incredible change has been the body language of uh, Sebastian. It looks like he's beginning to enjoy this experience now. He, he probably knew he was up against four real top players. One hundred and forty. You know, he just looks a much better player. It looked like a bit like someone. Walking into the lion's den as he walked in tonight, but all of a sudden we're seeing the best of him. And it's advantage. It's advantage, Sebastian, here. He does need that treble. And the problem is, the bed is obscured. 97. But what a lovely reset. And I know I keep sort of repeating myself, and I like to see Dar players just have a little think. But Matt is not going to give him anything without a fight. 100. Sebastian, you've 164. But it's six darts, Henry, from 164. For the match. 57. How many times have we said today, when you've got that set up there, that all of a sudden them trebles can shrink when you don't want them to? Fighting with himself, which usually means he's a little treble. Six. Sebastian, you require 107. So 107 for Bioretsky to secure the two points to get him off the mark in the group. 68 remains. Fifth. Stays nine. there looking to leave double four. 48. Should he return? Dennett wants one, two, four. You feel like he has to get this. Bullseye. 99. Sebastian, so Bioretsky returns for the match wanting 48. Let's see what the young man's made of. Two sixteens for Bielewski to secure Sebastian the victory Bielewetsky. by four legs to two. And he is off the mark in Group B 
Only Matt Dennett now yet to pick up a victory. Every single player playing two matches, but let's sum up the tail of the tape in this one. It was Dennett who got off to a flying start, but Bioetsky kept him at bay. And then in the end, motored towards the finishing line with an average of 91.74. It was Dennett who got the two maximums in that match. Four from seven on the checkouts for B, uh, for BOX compared to Dennett's two from nine. And that high checkout, of course, of 110. Two ton pluses from the pole in that game. We're going to take a short break. Upon our return, it's Scott Williams who is looking to make it three wins from three. Six points on six. It could be a super six if he can get past the wizard, Colin Osborne. Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Sebastian Biawetsky has just got his first victory of the evening. Glenn Durrant with me to reflect on that. We can see the stats on the screen there. Significant 110 checkout, the 108 as well. But I've got a feeling the 48 for him to win that match pleased you just as much. I I'm really pleased for Sebastian. It's, um, it's, it's a tough school. Uh, and he's, like I say, he's quite reserved. He's quite shy. He's sort of sat in the corner in the practice room. And I knew there was something inside of him bursting to get out tonight. And, um, you know, when he went 1-0 down, I thought the writing was on the wall. So I was really pleased, uh, and the 48 was pretty clinical.
and 57% uh, checkout success as well. That's, that's more clinical than we've seen from him so far this week. That'll give him a lot of confidence. The finishing generally uh, from the, you know, the, afternoon, the morning afternoon session to tonight has been, has been night and day. Uh, it's, there's been some quality darts tonight. Yeah, and we can have a look at the table now, see what that does to the league stand-ins. Of course, it is still Scott Williams who's up next. He has the opportunity to extend his advantage at the top of the table. He's up against your good pa pal Colin Osborne. You've just been shouting a few words down to him, haven't you? He, he was pretending he couldn't hear you. It is. It's going to be. A, it's going to be a great game. It's the top three. The three I said would get out of this group. Uh, I mean, Scott is a special player. There's, you know, there's no hiding that. Colin will be using his nous, his experience, to, you know, to get him through this game. This is a big two points for uh, for the wizard uh, if he can get this. But Scott looks like he's in pretty formidable form right now, and uh, it'll take something to beat him right now. He does look like he's in superb form, but players have had match darts to beat him so far this evening. That is encouragement for people who are facing him. The standard's been great, but his performance hasn't dipped. You know, he's, he's right. He's peppering that 100 average mark. You know, sometimes they dip near the end because of a couple of missed doubles, but everybody seems to like be on their game tonight. It's been, uh, it's been great, like to say, to be up close and personal and seeing them, you know, every dart that they're throwing, the mannerisms, the body language. Uh, yeah, it's been a great night so far. Absolutely. A superb standard of darts this evening. Will this match follow suit? Let's find out in the company of Henry and this chap when he legs it down. <laughs> Thank you very much, Abby. Now, what would you usually be watching on a Thursday night at a quarter to 12? QVC, question time. This is much better. This is going to be a class affair here between Scott Williams and Colin Osborne. Here we go. The 32-year-old Scott Williams from Boston, Lincolnshire, we must add. I know it's been an international flavour this week at the Super Series, but he's up against the man from Middlesbrough, Colin Osborne, the 47-year-old wizard. Seven-time PDC event winner. Okay, first, look at Scott to throw first. Game on. So Scott Williams gets us underway then in game six of our evening. 100. And Dazza has made the run down from the studio to the box just in time. My Fitbit's just gone 10,000 steps today, so it's not too bad considering the co uh, commentary box. One, that's for sure. 180. What a start from the T sider. The way these two are playing, this could be match of the night. One hundred and eighty. We said that for every single game that we've played tonight, because that's the quality, the standard that's out there. But what an opening from both players here. And following up, but not again. One hundred. I think he's done that a couple of times tonight. The one eighty followed by the one forties. The tons two two one after six darts. Both players have come out the traps. The fellow T side who is teasing us, Glenn, this evening with this nine. Well, boom. I'm here all week, unfortunately for you. He's just looking really good, and this is how he started the first game of the night, Colin. He's using everything that he's got the experience of being at the very, very top of the game. He's got you for 100. He said, "I'm not giving up." He said, "I'm going to find a, a new way how I want to play," and he's coming back and he's fighting. And fighting, and he's up 64. against a, a sensational well, talent here in Scott Williams. The Castley approach. Never going to give you up. That's the one. Hopefully, he won't let us down. Double six. Seven. And he may turn five. around, and leg may desert him. Got your require you one. See the frustration because he's playing Scott Williams. Scott Williams has already checked out on a hundred today. Which way is he going to go? He went the same as he did earlier. The only thing you six. worry about here is not to well, in your break out. Six. Double three, does he go straight for it? Or does he go for the two, double two option? Game shot on the first leg. Did I tell Colin you on the leg side with that? The TTT sider is following my footsteps there with a the double three. I quite like that double. And it looks like Ozzy does Second as well. A Colin terrific to start, it's already averaging on. 115. So the free, free, free sider for the TTT sider. These puns are coming now, guys. These puns. He's here all week. 
They're getting markedly worse. That's the problem. Ooh, you can tell we're getting close to the early hours now. It's been a long day, everyone. Good fun. Good darting fun and a great evening's action here at the Super hey, Series. Seven. Colin would be delighted to hear that, even though he started off quite poorly there. You don't want to hear Scott with his big scoring, so you know Scott's going to score. So Colin can't. He's set a benchmark now. You no, can't dip under that five. because he's up against someone who's on the top of his game right now and going for a three out of three. And on six points, you put yourself hey, virtually the there early on. Well, you need probably one more win from there. If you win four from four, you're through on night one. I think eight points is going to be enough. Well, mathematically, you can't not go through on ten. Mm. This is the best I've seen Colin Osborne. Colin's been down for a lot of the Teesside competitions. I've been following his career on the Challenge Tour uh, and some of the ADC stuff, which he's been doing as well. No, he seems to like great. that stage set up, that one-on-one, -on -one, that gladiatorial battle between two people on a stage with a MC and all the cameras that are there. That's what the best comes out of him because this is good stuff. 140. I think that leaves him 81 once again. And Scott Williams can do nothing in reply. He's a long way. That didn't come out of his hand like he wanted to, but that certainly did. 100. Colin, you require 81. Back to his favourite treble 19 now. He'll probably go treble 10 this time. Seventy-three. I'm trying to sort of guess these players' finishes are here, but that's actually not a bad way to go. So uh, it's set him up nice. There's nothing at all that Scott can do right now apart from put some pressure on it. One hundred and seventy-one. Exactly but well, Colin won't have even heard that. He hasn't taken his eyes off that double four now, and it's the same process, just replication. That's a great marker. Another wonderful marker. Can he bounce off them two darts? Game two nil lead, certainly can do. Colin will be feeling really good about himself. To be leading two nil against someone like Scott will be a good feeling for him. Exactly what he wanted. Did Scott to throw first, but it was only a hold to throw. Still nothing in this game. It's restricted Scott Williams to zero darts at double. Oh, Although if he, carry on play, if he carries on playing in that vein, that won't remain for much longer. Just look at those averages. They say there's still nothing in it. Both playing, you know, like a B plus game here. One hundred and forty. That that first, that just underneath that treble twenty seems his favourite dad. That's changed over the years. That certainly has. You can see the frustration there. Eighty. But how many times do you do that? You thought to throw that last out with a little bit of anger. But once again. It's all about where that first dart goes, and they're sitting so nicely for him now. Could it be a second maximum? 140. It's 140 hitting. It's been absolutely superb. Has Five it? now in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Averaging 103.95. Scott Williams himself just underneath the ton. And Osborne could actually do with another one of those 140s here. I didn't expect the wizard to sort of outscore Scott. But that's exactly what he's doing. 121. And he's left, a, he's he's left the ton. But the 146. Curial way of going here of the 146. It suits 96. the way he plays. A lovely last start. That set it up nicely. Colin, you require these 100. are the type of finishes that star players love. These are the type of finishes that would determine who wins these, these tussles. And what a dart that is. Double ten. Nineteen. He'd be frustrated now after such a wonderful so first dart. 50. To miss them two darts at a double, because I can't see Scott missing here. Game shot on the third and leg. So you approve Scott why Williams. Colin Osborne had two darts for a 12-dart leg. They came and went, and Williams mopped up the pieces. He won that in 14 himself. But it's so Osborne here who has the darts in leg four to open up a two-leg buffer. And if he was to do so... We'd only need one more from this juncture. The averages are impressive. 104.16 for Osborne, 98.25 for Williams, a max apiece. Difficult to prize them apart. Oh, 
pivotal will that moment be, though? Could we be looking back at the one end of this game? Two darts to go 3 0 instead of 2 1. I mean, it's a huge difference. Um, we could be looking back on that moment because Scott has not only finished there, he's already started the leg with another max. One the team side. He shows grit, he shows fight, he shows determination. He's using every bit of nous he's got on this dartboard to follow that maximum with his own. 96. Quality game here. Absolutely incredible stuff. Although you were involved in a cracker in your last comms appearance, if oh, I remember rightly, up at the uh, up at the lakeside. Was it Richard Vainstra you what, game you did? Yeah, I mean when we talk about players with momentum, with rhythm, you know, oh, when he gets going. It reminds me of, of an Alex Small, it reminds me of a Kurt Parry that, you know, you the throws to die for. And when they get it right, they get it right. And yeah, he broke all the records that night and Barney's legendary record at Lakeside, which I tried for so many times to beat it. Hey, what, a, what a lovely guy. What a lovely guy Richard Vinster is. Yeah, him and his wife Monique travel the circuit everywhere they go and a really, really nice couple. Hey, T3. That's a frustrating last dart and a, and a big changer there. 140 with a left of two data. You'd still probably make, especially with that dart, they would still make Osborne favourite here. Is it a treble 10 or is it a bullseye? Just depends how you feel as you go there. Hey, T7. It's got your require 100. I had a 2 and 3 chance there and I still got it wrong. But he's left a 48 finish. Is he going to get a shot? I think he's going to go bull one bull. Crazy dart at this 60. stage. Crazy darts. Calling your that was Scott Williams 101. Although it didn't go. Crazy darts. And we're even going to say disrespectful darts. There was no need for that. I love characters. But he's up against a top class player. But that could affect Colin. He could. Game show my fourth leg. I'm Colin thankfully. Osborne. And that could be a lesson there for Scott Williams there, that there's a time and a place. He's got it in abundance. The blind 180 was enough for me to show his character like tonight. Scott's a throw to go bull one bull. That's exhibition time, if you ask me. But you are talking to boring, boring, does it? 140. Couple of Horlicks later. Absolutely. However you're tuning in to us as we... Approach the midnight tower. Thank you for joining us. Whether it is with a cup of Horlicks or midnight snack, possibly. Hope you're enjoying the brilliant darts we have on offer for you. It has been a fabulous night, hasn't it? It's been a fabulous session. 96. Apologies for my frustrations there, but you can see how well the lad is playing. You hit a bull there. You've got a chance then to make a two each. 140. I'd love to know Colin Osborne's thoughts. What his thought process was as Scott was doing. I don't even know if he was looking at the board. These guys on the treble 19 tonight. They've been 171. absolutely superb. That's another 171. Three or three again, so he'll be staying there in the 19s also. Is there a magnet in that treble 19? 98. Begging for mercy. 94. 94 for three, two then for... Scott Williams, a potential 11 dart leg here. He's going to go ball top. She just knew it was going to happen, ball. but it doesn't quite go. What a talented man he is. What an absolutely talented player Scott Williams is. So double 10 for 13 dart Nine, leg to six. bring him back so into the game 20. at 3 2. Lovely marker. That one's awkward. Has to move across. No score. Will Osborne go bull nine Colin, bull? You require That's exactly what I would do in this situation. Yep. The dart he was looking for. And for the match, a huge two points for Colin Osborne. Hey, T9. And so Colin Williams gets 20. another chance at double 10. It may well be his last. Two fives game the to fifth stay left. alive. And Scott, Scott Williams, Williams still is in this game. But Colin Osborne now has the throw for a match to seal the victory over Scott Williams. It would put him on to four points to and would first. stop Scott from streaking clear.
What a perfect lie that first dart was. 121. I thought a max here would have been inevitable. You did. He's had quite a few tonight with the first three darts, but he, he would have took 1-2-1 one, one as he approached the hockey. But there's the magnet with that treble 19 where they're just smashing it to pieces. We'll need a ball change after this on that treble 19. And that's the way his game is. There's that treble 19 once again, but that, that's the way the game has changed. 18. The Colin Osborne, I remember, he loved the dart just sat above the treble 20. There's not a lot can go wrong with Scott's Nine, so sure. three. It's solid as an absolute rock. Just 26 points in this leg. That's not going to do him a great deal of favours. He needs to travel. 42. Could that be a big, big turning point in this match? Fifty-eight. That could, most definitely, it hands the initiative to Osborne. What would he give for a one forty right now? What would he give for a one forty right now? One hundred. Tom puts him on a finish, but. Williams may have wrestled the darts if he can get a couple of triples here. And that first dart on the trouble 19 is plum. And he was always no, inviting a ball. second alongside it. Calling and so 82 after 12, if he gets a chance, Colin Osborne, 158 for the match. Another. Two 19s to win in style. Absolutely incredible. Colin what Osborne. a way to win it from Colin Osborne with a 1 5 8 finish. With Scott Williams sat on 82 to take us to a decider and just marvel, marvel over those statistics. 98.11 Osborne, 96.17 Williams, two maxes apiece, four from 13, two from eight on the doubles. And that 158 checkout to seal the match for Colin Osborne. He halts the charge of Scott Williams. He will stay on four points. And when we return after the break, one of Sebastian Bioretsky and Nathan Gervin will join them on that figure.
Welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth, where we've just seen an outstanding performance from Osborne to get his second win of the evening. There we can see an average in excess of 98 from him, condemning the favourite to top the group, Scott Williams, to his first defeat of the evening. A sublime 158 checkout to get over the line in that one. We really have been treated to some superb darting action this evening already and up next we've got Nathan Gervin taking on Sebastian Biowetsky if we take a little look at the league table before we get into that one of course both players are on two points this is a repeat of the last match in Group A where Gervin had the opportunity to get his place in finals night if he'd been able to get the win over Biowetsky Biowetsky coming through that one in the end so who will come out on top in this clash this evening Let's find out in the company of Glenn and Henry. Thank you very much, Abby. And Nathan Gervin, he's going to have to put away the bad memories of this fixture yesterday. He won the battles on Monday and Tuesday, but the important one was game 15 of 15 on day three of Group A. Nathan Gervin needed a victory against Biowetsky after Danny Lauby lost out in his final game of the session. But Biowetsky came out of 4-2 victor in that and denied Gervin the opportunity to progress automatically through no, first, like it's to Saturday night's final first. from Group Game A. On. But it's a new day, a new group, a fresh mindset, and both of these players are looking to make it onto four points. 140. I think the question to be asked here is more about Sebastian. I think we know what we're going to get from Nathan in this game. He's looked pretty, pretty quality and solid all night, but uh, there was a real step up uh, by Sebastian in the last game and uh, compared to how we played in the first match. So I'm really keen to see if that progression continues. But uh, yeah, this is a key One game. You, you just hundred. feel if Nathan wins this, the sort of the group is really opening up that way. Big, like once again, once a big, again, it's a big two points. And of course, we would like to see how Sebastian backs up that really good performance against Matthew Denham, 91.74 average, 4 from 7 on the doubles. He just turned a switch, didn't he? There was a there was a marked change after he, when he was 1-0 down. I think we were both a little bit concerned for him there. Uh, but yeah, he just looked like a different player all of a sudden. 128. However, this could be an opening now against the darts. 26. Very much an opening against the darts. And so Bioretsky out of nowhere gets six and one seven seven for the opening leg. No, nice. this is sort you of know. interesting. Obviously, it's getting past sort of midnight now, and I guess you know both players of the experience of playing on the on the Super Series six, now. Especially um, you require seven. How you adapt to the different types of conditions now. He's this clinical finish, and that we've sort of seen from most of the players tonight. Is it going to continue? 38. Nathan, you require 120. And we've used the game changer analogy so many times today. And with Sebastian sat on tops, he really felt that uh, Nathan 60. needed that finish there. Sebastian, you require 40. And so tops to an opening leg breaker throw for Biowetsky. Game shot on the first. Just leg. as easy as that for Sebastian 16 dart break. He's looking good. He's looking strong. He's probably the one guy we didn't speak about as much as the other four. Uh, Second against Sebastian to throw us all wrong. Game on. He just looks actually the form player right now. He's uh, has a big, big step up for him. Please for the lad. Fifty nine. Makes me feel old watching these too. What's the combined age? Sixty. 37. Mm. Does make me feel very, very old. This is what darts is it all about. You know, the, the Phil Taylors of this world have set up this incredible opportunity for people now. And like I say, the prizes that are out there, it's no surprise to me that so many young players coming through academies like Nathan's done. And to see, you know, like I say, the best of Poland as well, sort of coming through. You've got the, the effect that Christoph Potaczki's had on a lot of these young players now. Uh, it's fascinating to watch. Fascinating to watch the progress. 
If you add Owen Binks into the mix, Whoa, there's a combined age between the three on the stage of 61. If you add in the commentator, hmm. it's 83. Mm. Nice. Yeah. 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 Just, just trying to work 36. out the production team as well at your backstage. So You'll be here all night, Glenn. Yeah, the calculator only has seven digits. Forty. Sebastian, you require sixty-eight. And we talked about this type of finishing, and all of a sudden, I really fancy where I thought Sebastian had no chance. Fifty-two. Sort of fancied him for that there. Nathan, you require yeah, the ninety-six. Chances, that, yeah, that momentum could have really kicked in. So is Nathan to get back into this match? Is it two doubles? Is it two doubles? Seventy-six. And that Sebastian, third dart caught the flight of the first. We always knew it was going to be awkward, that last dart. So across for double four now for Bioretsky, double two. 14. And he doesn't want to be messing about on the outer ring. Making and so Gervin returns with double ten to get the break back. Nathan had the no opportunity score. there. The sort of look went against him Sebastian, yesterday when he played two. Sebastian. And he put that on a plate there. Sebastian must go a big first dart. But that's a perfect dart, actually. Just follow that one in. Even the deflection would be nice no here. Score. Mm. Yeah, you can see the frustration there. And I like what Nathan's doing there. It's really, really sensible. Nathan, you're required 20. Now the focus will be nothing but that double 10. It's incredible when you sit here with all this, these statistics around Aims you, how missed doubles... Leg. Effect Nathan averages, Gerber. you know, what was a, a mid-90s game for both players. It has really affected there, but that one bothered Nathan at well, one job right now. He's back in this birds. match at one each. It's back on darts. It's back up with Nathan. Hey, it's so interesting, and we get a very lucky view that we have a fantastic system here at the Super Series, which logs every single dart in and we've got a brilliant stat screen in front of us and we get to see everything as live as every dart goes in and we we do get a guide as to the story of the match as a result of it just that 180 there alone the first of the match uh, or the second for the match for Nathan there and what a difference it has towards his averages there that's no, why I try to say five. to people the averages will come when you play well just learn to win the game first Whole 1-0 to the Arsenal mentality. Absolutely. Boring, boring Arsenal. 2 6, six. We've seen this again many times. And that magnet in the treble 19, is oh, it going to work? It certainly is. Don't leave double one. That's a Don't leave easy. double one. Go for the 180. 130. Sebastian Rocco, 170. This is my moment, Sebastian. Don't let me down. Don't let me down, Sebastian. Let 134, Nathan, you require 52. But this is fantastic. And he's that 52, which Nathan said a couple of times Games tonight. On the third leg. And that, I think that's Nathan been the story Gerber. of tonight with a lot of the players. That two dart finishing for so many round about that 52, 58, 56 mark. Four and it's been absolutely to clinical, birds. all of them tonight. It's a uh, 40% checkout rate for Nathan. Um, but Sebastian will be looking at his one in nine. Is the big difference of why he's 140. two one down right now. And you mentioned this afternoon about those types of combination finishes being so crucial in, in determining and dictating matters in your own favour. People, people would ring me. How many one eighties have you did tonight, Glenn? I went out and practiced. How many one eighties? How many one eighties? Honestly, I was religiously forty one to sixty one. I wouldn't go to bed until I'd finished an eighty one to a hundred. Because you've seen maybe me going on about it so much 100. today. The importance of doubles for door. You've seen how many times have we, you know, the 25 finish, which I've bleated on about so much today. How many times the importance of finishing there. And I just want the players to incorporate that into the practice sessions. Because they can all hit 180s. I mean, like I say, Sebastian has just floated that one in there. 134. But it's this bit Sebastian, here. You I'm impressed with the 180. But if you can check on 81. I'll come on stage and shake your hand.
Two sixteens for two two, but he will return with Gervin back on two oh seven. Ninety nine. So but two eights for thirteen data. And to level us up. Games on the fourth. In a game where you felt it should be two eights right now. You know, he's just a little bit ahead in the averages there. Uh, nothing in this game. I think 2-2 two, two probably sums up where we should be at to throw four legs here. Both players now best of three. A huge two points on offer here. Um, and that travel 19 is important more than ever right now. Lovely last start. To be feeling good about that. I hope the travel 19 is on commission tonight. Been incredible, hasn't it? I mean, even this afternoon, one of the you know the stories was that people's uh, going downstairs and that that one three four time and time again. Oh, excellent first start! You one just knew a Max was going to be hit on the back of it. And what a time for a third Max! We've talked about the 19s there, but what a, there's no better feeling in the world than that 180. 140. And they're feeding off each other. Two young lads battling. That's what I get with Nathan. You just feel like when he gets on that run. 100. I think, I'd have, I, think I would have probably utilised the bullseye on the last, last start uh, there just to sort of play the percentages once again. But it hasn't been affected too much. And you were it's still a huge advantage to Nathan Gervin. Definitely will use the bullseye here. The younger players are so good. That last start was key there. Bullseye. That would have been some recovery after slipping into the 15. Can Biowetsky get the 167 for a break of throw? Not on this occasion. And guess what it is again, Glenn? It requires exactly. 25. Honestly, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a lot of people say I won't. Big dart. Nine. Sebastian, you require 65. Expect him to sort of go around the bullseye here. But how many times you go for that 25 and hit the bull, but he hasn't. Two darts. Two big, big darts. Game shot in the fifth. He left. only needs the one. Sebastian Biawetsky. He's leading 3-2 now in this crucial game. That's a huge dart there. Nathan had his Did chance. Like it's Sebastian to throw Hands in his pocket there thinking, I really should be 3-2 up right now. But it's Sebastian who takes the lead with his darts. And opens up with that beautiful treble 20. 140. One hundred and forty. This is quality. They're bouncing off each other now. It's beautiful to watch. Absolutely beautiful. The standard in this game has been superb. The standard nine, tonight has nine. been absolutely superb. There's been at least one ninety plus average in every single game this evening. 60. Compared to this afternoon session where I think it was one match where the two lads averaged over 90. And they're the only two of the session. Absolute night and day. Literally. 92. 50 advantage now to Sebastian. Sebastian you have a 170. I don't even think he'll go for the 170, even if he has the opportunity. 94. What a last dart. What a last dart that is. Nathan's pretty helpless in this position. All he can do right now is at the 134. 134. Which he does, but so Bierecki will 76. return for 76. For the match, for a 4-2 victory, which would put him on to four points. Double eight Game does it nicely for Sebastian, Sebastian Bierewski, Bierewski, who secures the 4-2 victory over Nathan Gervin, courtesy of that double eight on the back of a 76 finish with an average of 97.85. It really was a quality Tungsten affair. Gervin himself averaging 90.43, five maximums in that match. 4 from 14 on the doubles would be a Retsky, but it was that high out of 76 which secured him the victory, secured him the two points, and it puts him joint top of the table alongside Messes, Osborne and Williams. We're going to see Colin in action after the break as he takes on Matt Dennon, who's looking to be the last player to get points in Group B.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. We've got three games remaining for you in this evening session in Group B, but let's take a little look at what happened in our last match as Sebastian Bielwetski got the better of Nathan Gervin yet again, a 4-2 victory for him, an average just shy of 98. And after an underwhelming start to the evening, but Bielwetski has really upped his level in his last two matches. There you see it. He did miss 10 darts at a double, but his scoring prolific in that one. Let's take a little look at what that does to the league standing heading into our final three games of the evening. It's Colin Osborne, who's top of the standings. He's up next, of course, against Matt Dennant, who's looking for his first victory of the evening. Of course, Colin Osborne, fantastic in his victory over Scott Williams in his last match. A 98 average posted in that one. Let's see who comes out on top in this one in the company again of Glenn and Henry. Thank you very much, Abby. It's the two players that bookend our Group B table going toe-to-toe -to -toe in this one. Colin Osborne, top on leg difference from Sebastian Bielewetski and Scott Williams up against Matt Dillon, who desperately needs to get points on the board. He'll play in this one and then the final game of the session against Nathan Gervin later on this evening. But Colin Osborne has perhaps been playing some of the best darts we've seen all evening. And I'm sure when he's self-reflecting in the practice room there, he would have took six points. Uh, you know, three wins, one loss. I think any of the players tonight, I think maybe someone like Scott Williams, I'm going to win all hey, four games like tonight. It's Colin to throw sensibly. Game on. Uh, so I think it's a big game for Colin here. He'd go away with six points. A very, very happy man. For Matty, the competition starts now. It's getting to a stage now where it's a must win. So another intriguing battle awaits. Because the other thing as well is because the group is bunching up in the fashion that it is 100. now, the one who's chasing from the bottom has got a lot of work to do. Even though the points difference may not be as big, you're having to jump hoops at every single juncture. And it's getting to a stage then where you're relying on other people uh, and you want it in, 50, your, in your own hands, really. Um, so, yeah, big, big game for Matty, but I'm sure he just needs telling that. He's just looked incredibly solid no, tonight, 95. He? It's not like it, I haven't seen Colin play for a long time. You know, I've seen him, but um, like I said, y you get players, the Kevin Painters of this world, One where they're just a hundred. better player on a stage. You know, playing on a floor is tough. Playing local competitions, it's tough. But when you get the professional, you know, what you're getting tonight, the stage, the setup, you know, some players just absolutely love that. And I just get the feeling that Colin's in really, really enjoying himself tonight. Certainly the best I've seen Colin throw for a long while now. I know he's had some success as well on the ADC no, Championship Tour as well this year. When I'm up in one of the events, I believe. It, again, when we're talking about professional, the ADC, the setup there is uh, pretty amazing. I've got Scott Hunt from uh, the North East is uh, playing a big part in that, along with Steve Brown, etc. And I know a lot of the Teesside lads are off to Bristol this week. And uh, so a big shout out for me, mate, Carl Coleman, who's... Doing his very, very best. His, his dream is to play well, at Lakeside. 161. He said he would love to play something like this Super Series. And uh, they're the type of players I'd like to see. Well, but it's people like me and Colin who sort of showed the people of Teesside what can be done. And, you know, it, it's great to see how many players are coming through from our region now. 77. And of course, shall I say, move across the northeast. The amount of players from Newcastle, dare I say that word in front of you. I'll see how Colin does Colin on this finish here, but it, it's really interesting when you start talking about the Geordies as well, because it, 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 you know, there is a little story to tell. But I'd just like to see if uh, Colin can just check out this, because it would put him in a great position. He's probably going to go for the bull now, because you don't give... And once again... 44. Once again, how many times have we seen that, that, that big number missed today? We haven't we haven't really seen as well as the finishing's been good. We haven't really seen big three that, that really changed like a one three three. Ninety seven. Colin, you require forty. Colin's been pretty deadly on the doubles tonight, which is probably a commentator's curse. But we'll see how that goes. Game shot on the first leg. Didn't Colin Osborne. Look at that. Look at this. Just watch 
his demeanour, watch his body language, the grit of the teeth there. It's just all that experience coming so through. Second, Matt he still wants it. it. It's great to watch. This is just not a a night out for him. You know, he realised what the prizes are with the Moda Super Series. Fifty nine. Uh, he's given it his all. Uh, but when you talk about Newcastle, a, a big turning point in my career was winning an awful lot in the in the Teesside area. A uh, bit of a one trick pony was sort of the you know the nickname. He he, he never leaves Forty Middlesbrough. Forty five. Uh, and when you start winning tournaments up there with a, you know with the likes of Gordon Dobie and uh, you know Paul Knighton was an uh, exceptional player. One uh, hundred and eighty. Always, always been so tough. Then you know that you're a great player. A lovely one eighty there from Matty Dennant. He's going nowhere. If Colin's going to win this, he'll have to fight for it. One hundred. Got to fight for your right to party in Pompey. One hundred and twenty-five. Needs himself on a finish after nine there, Matt Dennant. Just he said Matt Edgar then. Yeah, just when you think, just when you think, Matt Dennant's sort of out of it. He just sort of, he's got that fighting spirit about 60. him, hasn't he? Sixty, Matt, you were one hundred and thirty-seven. And there was a switch turn for Sebastian tonight. Is this the moment now for sort of Matty? 59. Only a 180 will do here. That's all. Anything else is looking pretty irrelevant. Probably puts pay to, to this leg for Colin. He's probably already thinking of the next leg. Hey, uh, do you want? I don't Mate, expect Matty Dennis to be messing around with his 78 finish too much. So double Aim eight for Matt Dennant to make it one one, and it is as easy as that for the scholar. And a top class finish to level us up at one apiece. Both one from one on the checkouts, but it's been the scoring phase so Collins far, which has been a little bit suspect. That's going with darts right now, so it's, it's over to Colin. But it, the first three darts of his. Legs have been so solid. 140. It's tough to beat when you stand by and you win a leg and all you want to hear is 60. And when you hear that, the tone of Owen go with one, you know, it, it does sort of sicken you a little Third, bit. You won. No one wants to hear Owen. Yeah. Even if he does laugh at your parallel parking. He's one to talk, by the way. Matty Dennis just just to the crowd there. That's very easy for me to say. I'll try that again in a second. Fifty-eight. I don't think the time is now to get the word gargantuan. I I had a bet earlier with Scott Williams, but I couldn't get that word in. So I'm still trying to get my tongue around gesticulating. Just, just. One hundred and twenty-three. That's super impressive leg again, here, Henry. Oh, Colin Osborne is getting his way around hey, this leg and perhaps five. wrestling control of this match. One nine two after nine, then all the way back on three two seven. And that first start tonight has usually been a nice life for him, but that one slips into the single one, and now he's just got to reevaluate. The options one seven one left, so he's going to head downstairs for the triple nineteen. Now, how many times have we seen that? And imagine Alex Small in that position there; he would have just flung that last yeah. dart, and that's what I would probably say to Alex. Maybe show them that just one take your time, get the reset. Triple nineteen goes in. That's the difference. Just that little bit of experience, a little bit of composure. Triple eighteen. Left tops, but Denon all the way back on Three, two two seven. Eight. Still got that luxury of time, seemingly all the time in the world. That's unlucky. Now he has to get a treble. Forty. That was a nice angle. Colin, you require nice fifty-six. Angle there. But how many bounce outs have we had today? And how many finishes have we had round about this fifty-six mark? And they've been very, very good tonight. I have to say, but don't miss the big number. Double top. Got a 2 1 lead. Colin Osborne. 16. Oh. And the way these 19s are going in tonight, 
three treble nineties would be nice. One hundred and thirty-three. It's still working. Colin, you require forty. But it's tops. And it, you know, he needs it here. Let's not get complacent. Game shot in the third Solid. leg. As Colin Osborne. Look at that. Growl. Growls at the board. And there must be one great big puncture mark at the well, top to middle bit to of first. tops. Game because on. it seems every single time he's come back for that double, three darts in hand, it has hit the same puncture mark. First dart. 97. And I know personally how hard he's worked, how frustrated he's been. Because when you throw technically changes, you know, and uh, to sit with him at the Teesside Open uh, this year, and he said it's it's taken him a long time. One but he feels now that he's getting really back to a stage where he wants to be. He's winning. He's not frightened to go to local tournaments. He's getting that match practice because it knows there's fruit when he comes to the bigger tournaments. And uh, yeah, he's got. You've got to say he's been mightily impressive tonight. And that's kind of your base level, isn't it? That's where you do your groundwork and you kind of test where your game is at in an environment One where there is obviously the pressure hundred. to win, but not in terms of ranking points or things like that. But when you've been to the very top, when you've been in the top 10 in the world, which Colin has, you know, to suddenly go back to local league again, you know, you feel like it's a a lose-lose situation. Probably one of the reasons why I hid away, you know, due to my very bad times as well. Uh, but Colin's been proud as a peacock he's always turned up win or lose and uh it's a great mentality to have. 170. were you matt didn't have to if osborne back on 263. 64. Yeah, it's been one of them sort of uh, matches where if, if you've got the darts you're sort of running away with a leg as long as you don't mess about with the finishing at the end Fifty-eight. Now you require one hundred and six. This sort of finish has been hit by many of the players tonight. Treble eighteen and double sixteen. Seventy-four. He was looking far to equal the game. This is the fourth leg that we've talked about again so much. That three-one-two-two two once again. It just mirrors so many of these matches. One hundred. So double sixteen 32. with dart sixteen. Two eights. Twenty-two apiece. It won't go. That's Colin, just you the difference. One hundred and five. That's the absolute difference, and uh, it'll be no surprise to me to see this man check out on this one or five. Treble nineteen or treble fifteen. A wire away. He should stay around that treble sixteen area. Just needs to compose himself. Really you know what Matthew was doing there. Matt, you just didn't look at eight. the board. Just stayed in his own zone. Something Dimmy van der Berg does an awful lot right now. So there's nothing wrong. Just focus on that double four. Which has been hit tonight. This Game double two, the this double two has been hit a few times Matt tonight. That's exactly what Matty Dennett needed. And he's taken the match to 2-2 two -two now. He's given Colin Osborne something to think about. Both it's nowhere like near the best in this. Uh, Collins probably his best attribute has been his finishing in this leg, but the score has been pretty woeful from both players now. Even so, I want to give you a hit of max there. One hundred. Where my uh, predictions have been today, but he's been so solid with it with his darts, his first three darts of every leg, and it's tough. To, it's tough to beat. One hundred. And the important thing, having playing so much or playing so many games as they are in a day, you're going to have. One which is not up to your side. It's making sure you get the two points in that game where you know you're not up to your level. If you win, if Colin wins ugly here, I think he just goes away. Still a very happy man. He's got the six points where he's come for. So I think that's a great point that Henry, you're right. 100. Reminder, we're back at 9.30 tomorrow morning here on Sporty Stuff TV for the conclusion of Group C. 9.30, we begin two players from six will progress and join Danny Lowby at finals night on Saturday. That's a 10 o'clock start with us again here on Sporty Stuff TV and on the Motors Super Series YouTube channel across the world. And you can join us 100. here in Portsmouth to see some darts just like that.
dartshop.tv, the place to be to get your free tickets for Saturday night's darty party in Pompey as Dennant needs one, two, one after nine. 100. He was just beginning to take control with a 140 previously. But he's a fighter, this lad. But that is a dart which is a uh, treble 18. Aye, he's set it up nice. He's put an awful lot of pressure because this 23. would be for a break as well. Colin, are you up for the challenge of this 103? Big moments in this match. I don't think he fancied that 17 there. What does that leave? A double 13. He certainly didn't plan this. How's your look, Colin? How is your look? I'll try that again. How's your look, wizard? How is your look? 90. So Denim returns. 32. For a breaker throw and a 3 2 lead. And he then have the darts to both for his first victory of the evening. Game and there it the goes to Dennant. There is the break. That misfire into the single 17 could cost Colin Osborne big in the complexion of this match. And Matt Dennant now has the so darts Matt to secure those. his first victory Game of the on. evening. You talked about the bunch sort of, you know, the, the table bunching up. A victory here for Dennant would do exactly that. One hundred and forty. Unbelievable night we have tomorrow night. Um, he just felt like Colin was sort of just running away with this game. But what this, you know, this is a big turning point in this in this league. I'm sure the guys in the practice room are, Ooh, are shouting for Matty Dennant here. Um, just huge game. Just look at his eyes right now. Look at the eyes. Eighty-five. I think he fancies this right now. He needed a max just to get level in this leg, Osborne. 59. And so it is full advantage to the scholar on 276 after six. And he's making huge inroads here. He's marching towards the finishing line. And his first win of the evening, he leaves a finish after nine. How do you think Colin feels if he goes away with a two and two? He knows he's in with more on the shout tomorrow. Mate, That's the important thing. Give yourself a chance. Eighty-five. Only Matty Dennett makes things hard for himself, doesn't he? But that last start there was uh, exactly what he wanted. And how many times have we said that people want 50-plus finish here and no one's let us down tonight? 140. Just gives, Mate, you're just 51. gives Matty something to think about. That dart had to go in. And double 16, two darts. Go but a 4-2 victory for match. Matt Dennett, which does things Matt to this Dennett. group. It bunches them all together, an 87.48 average, 36% on his doubles, a huge win for Matty Dennant there. Colin Osborne, his night is finished with two wins out of four. Coming up next, we've got Sebastian Biawecki against Scott Williams.
Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth where we have just witnessed Matt Dennant get his first victory of the evening in his last match of the evening. There we have confirmation of it. A 4-2 victory over Colin Osborne in that one. An average of 87 with two 180s. Four out of 11 on the outer ring. Doing enough in that one to get the better of the man who is currently top of the league table. We can take a little look at that now. He is top, but... In this next match, we have Biawetsky against Scott Williams. One of them will move ahead of Colin Osborne going into the final day of action. One of them will move on to six points, of course. In the next match, it is Biawetsky against Scott Williams, our penultimate game of the evening. It's Scott Williams looking to bounce back after defeat in his last match. Biawetsky really grown into tonight's action, hasn't he? Got better and better as the evening's gone on really impressive in his victory over Nathan Gervin. Can he follow that one up with another victory to end his evening or will it be Scott Williams who ends his evening with three victories out of four? Let's find out in the company yet again of Glenn and Henry. Thank you very much, Abby. I'm really intrigued to see how this Tungsten tussle goes as Scott Williams does something which is quite traditional for him with Sebastian his last first. three practice darts. He Game bunches off. them all together and he throws it at the board and I believe he throws it left-handed as well. He's an exhibitionist. I'm sure he'd be, as time goes on, he'd be, he'd, he'd be great in exhibition. The blind 180s, the uh, bull one bull. Get him booked in because he's a quality player as well. 100. Okay, and this is a match where both players are sat on four points. The winner of this game sort of takes control of the group and will be sitting pretty uh, ready for a Friday night session. 96. And who would have thought that would have been Sebastian uh, two hours ago? Um, he'd be really pleased if he can top the table after the start he had. 85. And it just shows how this format can just change so dramatically. Biowetsky. Lost out 4-1 to Colin Osborne. It was a slow start for the pole before them beating Matt Dennett by Nine, four legs to two five. and then beating Gervin by the same scoreline. Averages in that one of 91.74 against Dennett and then 97.85 against Gervin. One, but there we go. It's another no-look. 180 for That's Scott Williams. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What a talented boy he is. Got your 136. Well, can he? Can he go bull double 18 bull? Oh, sorry. Double eight. 120. My first three figure shout of the day. Sebastian, you're 125. Sebastian, one two five again. Another another finish we all love. Does he go? Does he go 25 bull or does he go treble 17? 75. It's got your quite eight. Got a break as well to come out the traps. Madhouse. Game shot on the first Absolutely. Leg. Was there any Scott doubt? Williams. Blind 180, you know, double one finish for the first leg. Some talent. Scott Williams, 1 0. Second leg, it's And all of that within 15 darts. Game we on. Talked about Aaron Monk being a maverick. Can you imagine Saturday night? Full crowd in there of Aaron's friends and family. And Scott is doing blind 180s and hey, bull one seven. bull. I want to be a part of that. You could be a part of it as well. Dartshop.tv for your free ticket to Saturday night's finale. It's the 100. red carpet occasion here at the Super Series where only the winner of the week will progress their way through to Champions Week and the coveted £20,000 top prize. And the eight players that have already booked their place there of Robert Owen, Chaz Barstow, One Graham Hall, Daryl Pilgrim, Lee Evans, Kieran Tierney, who won the first ever night here at the Live Lounge, Graham Usher, and Conan Whitehead, who won on Saturday night. Will we see Biorecki pick up the big prize? We will with more visits like that. And just look at his average. We said he was getting better as the day went on. Sebastian's well over that 100 mark, and he's 93. going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Scott. 
And just a quick, a big shout out to Conan Whitehead. There, there was a guy who was just totally and utterly out of confidence. Uh, I remember messaging him after the, he had a torrid time at the county dance to see him win last week. I'm very, very proud. I really enjoy Conan's company. I really do. One of my favourite interviews was probably that winning interview last week. One hundred and really honest in his seven. appraisal. It's important to be honest. With you. He's that eighty-one finish again. Is it the traditional treble nineteen? Twelve. Once again, forty-one. He's gambled so on the triple, and by doing 40. so, he's missed out on the opportunity to have a dart at bull. And you would not put this one fourteen past Williams. It's a B for a two nil lead, having broken in the first tops. Game there it the is. Second leg. Absolutely Scott lethal. Williams. That's a hundred and ten finish was memorable earlier. A one or six was memorable earlier. As soon as you want, I seen they wanted one one for you. Just well, have to, to fancy throw it. He punches the air with delight there. The guy is. The guy is a talent, and he leads 2-0. And Sebastian's not doing an awful lot wrong here. Another, another match 100. where both players are averaging over 100. Have a look at them averages, as Glenn says. Absolutely incredible. Spellbinding Nine, stuff three. here at the Super Series. Shabba. Oh, no, that's not Shaggy, is it? Is it? Yeah, yeah. That's my pop knowledge going down the hill there. You asked me hey, to be in your quiz team, I probably know good. Well, I always thought Shaggy was Joe Merlin. He was, yeah. Although, if you do enter the quiz team, it'd be nice because at least someone would turn up. <laughs> so I hear you. Here comes my lover, lover. <laughs> it's getting late, guys. Apologies. Ooh, Apologies for the commentary box. to go up now scott Nine, williams D8. and that leaves guess what glenn surely surely the penultimate game of the night i'm going to get the 170 i've craved for all day you probably go three ball size and set it up D3. for double 10. Scott, you require one surprise me 70. come on scotty boy you know you would have gone for it as well I think it'd have gone blind. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't Nine, get two different G7. characters when you sort of look at the when you sort of 68. dissect the pair of them. But it is the flamboyance and the exuberance of Scott hey, Williams that is taking full leg. command of this match. Scott Williams. As he opens up a 3-0 lead over Sebastian Biowetsky and he's one away. From the victory post, he's picked up the double breaker throw, which means well, he has got, got the dart to Game secure on. that 4 nil win. And could it be the first 4 nil of the day? 57. Indeed, it's been a closely fought day. It's been about four twos in this group. The last five matches hey, have finished by that scoreline, and then we had that flurry of four threes in this morning session it was absolutely magnificent to watch nine of those games one going the distance but this one might not have much longer left in it as scott williams gets his second max of the match to put on two six four after six and biaretsky is on the canvas hey, he's on the ropes as williams advances making a march towards victory and towards potentially topping the table overnight Oh, this is excellent. Oh, he was trying to do it again. Love it. Absolutely love it. I think Jamie Hughes has been said he's got the best throw in the PDC dart at the moment, but uh, I'd argue that the way it's, when, when Scott's on it, he's got you know, that throw is uh, there's not an awful. Look at that angle there. He likes that treble 18. 111. He will return. I had my fingers and toes out there trying to count what the finishing was, but uh, a wonderful way of leaving 32. What would be our first ton plus average 100. of the day? Scott Williams Scott, stares down. 32. 
Double 16 for a 13 data and the match. Go and the most and the remarkable match. performance from Shaggy. A 103.66 average. It's the first ton topper we've seen today. What a game that was. Sebastian Bioretsky with a 95 average didn't even get a data double. That was how good Scott Williams was. Absolutely electric from the eccentric. 103.66, two maximums, four from eight, 50%, 114 high checkout. Whatever stats line you look at, it was superb from Scott. So, our last game of the day, game 25 at 25 on Thursday here at the Super Series, sees Matt Dennant take on Nathan Gervin. Welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth, where we've just seen our first whitewash win of the day here 
at the Super Series. An incredible performance from Scott Williams. The first ton topping average of the day as well. 103.66 in that one. 50% checkout success in that match as well. We saw some fantastic finish in the 114. A real highlight in that match. Another look, no look 180 from Scott Williams in the game as well. A real showman and he certainly put on a show for us all in that match. Let's see what that does to the league table then with one match remaining this evening. Scott Williams on six points. And this next match it is Ma Matt Dennant against N Nathan Girvin. So one of those will end the evening on two points. But we're yet to find out who it will be. Of course, Nathan Girvin, the only other player to average in excess of a ton this week. He did so on Tuesday. Can he replicate that here in the last game of the evening? Chaps, who do you think is going to come out on top in this one? Interesting question, Abby. I'm going to go Nathan Gervin in this one. Don't know about you, Glenn. I mean, it is a toss of a coin. Uh, just for the enjoyment of it, I'll go Matthew Dennett then. But uh, honestly, it's a flick of a coin. It's uh, a full admiration for all five players tonight. It's uh, been a real eye-opener for me. And all five, I think, have been absolutely superb. But the loser of this game will go to bed tonight, I think, and can they pull this back? Because when it's such a small group and you start sort of dropping down a little bit, they suddenly become must-wins. So, uh, you know, consider it's the last game of the night. It's probably the biggest game of the night also uh, because the loser's got a long, long road back. Okay, first leg, it's Matt to throw Interestingly, first. on the back of that 4-0 win game for Scott on. Williams, where he aged 103.66, a brilliant performance from Scott, it's made his nightly average... Just over 97, over four games. He's a talent. 140. He is, uh, he's as good as I thought he was, you know, when, when I met him sort of this year. And, and I won't lie, there was, you know, who is this guy? You know, not many people can walk in there and have a presence for the type of players that's in the PDC. But he did. Um, but he backs it up. He backs it up with his performances. He played for England this year. You know, he's done tremendous on the challenge oh, to where he, he is. Yeah, he's got a bright, bright future. And the overall average for the entire group ahead of this game is 91.4. We've seen some fantastic stuff this evening. Considering this afternoon, you know, it was a sort of, I felt like a barrage of missed doubles and 70 averages, early One 80 averages. 180. Um, but uh, and what, and this game just continues. Look at the average Matthew Denon setting already. 140. Matthew Gervin looking 36. to follow. 136 for Dennett for 12 dart leg to open. That's a perfect guide. But he couldn't follow it. He's going to return for tops after 12. It's just what the doctor ordered. Nathan's probably feeling, what do I have to do? 44. What a week Mate, this has been. 40. Everything's against me. Game shot on the first leg. 14 Matt dart first Dennett. leg there from Matty Dennant. He looks as fresh as a daisy there. Has the week been just a little bit too long for Nathan? Second leg is Nathan's there, throw Matty is as focused as he was at 10 o'clock tonight. Game on. And more importantly, it's a bright start, 14 data. We'll be looking to break Nathan now. 100. So it's time for Nathan to kick off leg two with a dart, but this man is throwing some good stuff at the latter end of the day. It's the focus now. Just watch the player's eyes. There's, hard, there's just no blinking from Matty right now. 93. He's just, like I said, he's got that eye on that treble 20 now, and he's feeling good. You can just tell by his whole demeanour. Look at him. He's just feeling great. You can just plunk him in that treble 20 right now. So come on then, Glenn. Last game of your first day here in the Super Series commentary box. Have you enjoyed yourself? Seriously? You know, I always 24. answer questions as honest as I can. I've had a fabulous time. And I mean, it, it's, it's a marathon. You know, at times today, it was, you know, these four threes. That, you know, you, you're thinking, am I repeating myself? Am I saying things for, you know, for no reason whatsoever? But tonight just rejuvenated me. It's been a, it's been a wonderful session. I can't wait for Saturday night. I, mean, I don't want to bypass what's going to happen tomorrow, but I can't wait for Saturday night. You will enjoy it. That's all I'm going to say. 
95. We'll have Chris Mason alongside us as well for that, as Dennett leaves 36 after 12. Govan can only apply pressure, but that was a snatch there with the first dart. I just wonder whether Nathan, as Glenn mentioned a few moments ago, is just 64. running out of a bit of energy here as Dennett returns 36. for the double 16 for a 2-0 lead. Break of throw Aims as easy leg. as that. Matt and Dennett. the average is 111.33. He is running towards the finishing line in this last game of the session. He's halfway there already. 2-0 after three minutes. First. Game on. This is good. One this is very good. Absolutely stupendous. Scintillating. Sublime. One Superlatively. I'm gonna say I've run out with superlatives, but what an opening they just both with Max's one hundred and that one three four wouldn't be a game of darts tonight if there wasn't no one three four. Fifty seven. One eight seven after six darts. A lot of players have gone the nineteenth at this point. Forty four. First loose one we've seen from Denon in this game. But what does Nathan do? He capitalises. 100, mate. You're recording. Probably even a little bit disappointed after that unbelievable first out there. So 1 4 3. Treble 17. And that leaves. 166 has gone the bullseye route to leave 41 there. But what we haven't had tonight is that real big, huge finish. And we're not going to see it here. No, so Denham returns to 41 for 3 0 in next to no time at all. This has been what tonight's been all about. This game these finishes the third, have just man. been absolutely Matt insane Dennett. from all five players. And he continues the trend. 110 average here from Matt Denham, 3 0 up. Well, look, it's Nathan's Nathan's has got to be thinking, why me? Game on. Why me, Matty? If he could do it in less than 50 seconds, Ford, he, he would won. break Graham Usher's record. Although I think we may just pass that bridge on timing. 100. Look at the average, 109. 96. At 10 past one in the morning. It's all right. Just not fair. It's One hundred. A hundred's a low score for him right now. Imagine hitting a ton and it brings your average down. <laughs> Eighty-four. Performance of the night. I mean, I know Scott Williams has been unbelievable. Eighty-one. But what a marker Matty's putting down. And after the first two games, we were talking, is he out of the running? 140. Nathan's not going down without a fight. 100. Nathan, you've got 140. 140 to save the match. And so Dennett's going to return for Shanghai 40. for a 4-0 win. You've got 120. To cap off the best performance we've seen today in the last game of the day. Oh, that's unlucky. That's Four, been deflected out of or away from that first dart. So a ton for Gervin. Tops he wants. Two tens. Game for three the one. Flag. And Gervin's Nathan still in Gervin. this game. He's still trying to claw out opportunities for himself. And that's his first two he darts of double in the first. match. Game on. Denon here. Has the darts, has the pro to seal a 4-1 victory. It would put hey, him back in the mix. It would finally poise the table going into the second day's action. The loser of this game will finish bottom of the group 100. overnight. Den and Gervin on two. Bioretsky, Osborne, four. And Williams, top of the pile, on six. He's the man to beat going into tomorrow night. That is for certain. And we will return with this group tomorrow evening at 10 p.m. on Sporty Stuff TV.
Six. But do join us from 9.30 a.m. when we're going to see the conclusion of Group C. 9.30 start, Sporty Stuff TV and Around the World on the Motors Super Series YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe to it because we have got plenty of content coming up over the next couple of days. Gervin needs a lot. And so Denon has six and 140 for the match. You love a ton here. Love a treble with this last dart. 60. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. 96. And so, Mate, you're going 80. to put the gloss on a glorious victory. Two tens. Game for Dennett the match. to seal a superb Matt victory Dennett. to end the night's action here in Group B. He is a victor over Nathan Gervin by four legs to one. And this is how he did it with the best performance we have seen today. 104.14 average, two maximums to his name, four from five on the checkouts, the high out of 80 there. And Matt Dennett finishes the show superbly with a 4-1 victory against Nathan Gervin. That concludes the day's action then here at the Moda Super Series. Just one more order of business to do, and that is to head upstairs and get the final thoughts and observations from the three-time lakeside champ that is Glenn Doan. He's upstairs talking to Abigail Davis. Yeah, thanks very much, Henry. Wow, Matt Dennant, and wow, the standard of darts we've seen all night. I mean, it, it was a tough afternoon. I mean, it was just enthralling, uh, but tonight, you know, we, we waxed lyrical so much about the talent that was out there, all five players, but boy, did they deliver. What an unbelievable night of darts, and probably the performance of the night saved right at the end, and it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. It really, really was, and we can see what that does to the league standings heading into the final day of action. Of course, it moves Matt Dennant up to second in the table. Of course, he had three darts at a double to beat Scott Williams in his opening match, but it was really the last two games of the day where he really came into his own, wasn't it? I mean, there's a couple of things, you know, when you look at that table there. Uh, I mean, Matt Dennant, after the first two games, we were, you know, me and Henry were talking, is he out of the running already? Uh, but he showed unbelievable fighting qualities and, you know, 104 average at the end, you know, so late at night as well. Absolutely super, but what a talent Scott Williams is. I knew how impressive he was, you know, it's not often a guy can walk into a pro tour of the PDC and make a statement without having a tour card. And he's as good as I thought he would be as well. And, and tonight, you know, that mixture of the, the cockiness, the brashness. But I also saw a different side to him. But also he let the darts do the talking. He did. And I think there's often a misconception yes. with Scott Williams because I think people think he's overconfident. He's too cocky. He's not. He just believes in his own ability. He's a very pleasant man, though. And he, he just, as you said, lets his darts do the talking. I'm a big believer in balance. And I, I would love to maybe see some of the players see the softer side of him as well. Uh, because I have tonight and I like him a little bit more tonight. It's great having all that, but just to hear him talk, the respect he had for Nathan earlier, it goes a long way, but it certainly does with me anyway. Most definitely, and we do come to a conclusion in both Group B and Group C tomorrow. It's been a long day, hasn't it? We'll head into Group C tomorrow morning, so let's remind you how things are looking going into the morning session. I believe we can have a little look at the league table going into that. It is Jamie Kelling, isn't it, who sits top at the moment. He's been really impressive, really looking forward to seeing him back in action. What can Aaron Monk do, though? I mean, Aaron Monk is the Scott Williams of Group B and C. I mean, we've had a couple of mavericks, a couple of characters there today. I enjoyed watching Aaron Monk. Uh, I thought uh, Jamie Kellum is a, you know, deserved top of the table. I mean, it's all to play for. Lee Cox, very interesting. Didn't play his best today. He's joined top. And I'd be interested in how he feels tonight because I'm sure he felt he got away with a couple today, but he's right in the mix there. Uh, be interesting to see which two go through from that group. Absolutely. An incredibly congested table heading into the final session in Group C. Of course, we had so many last leg deciders in that session this morning. We may well have more tomorrow morning. You can rejoin us from 9.30. And just a reminder as well, if you want to join us on Saturday for this party atmosphere, you 
can be in the crowd. Tickets are free. All you need to do is go to dartshop.tv to register your interest and you could be here on Saturday. You may even bump into this man if you're fortunate. We'll see you tomorrow at 9.30am though for the conclusion of Group C.